Pass Protection Written by Christine Kersey Narration by Eleven Labs Produced by Christine Kersey Copyright 2018 by Christine Kersey Chapter 1 The moment she woke, she knew something was seriously wrong. Glancing around the room where she lay, she recognized that she was in a hospital. But why? What had happened? Her mind was fuzzy, her world uncertain, and when she wasn't even sure who she was, panic set in. A tall, attractive man who she guessed was in his late twenties approached her bed, his eyes shiny with relief. The look on his face gave her a sense of calm, but only for a moment. Who was this stranger reaching for her? As he drew near, she recoiled. He stopped, his eyes broadcasting a mix of confusion and concern. Olivia? Was that her name? It felt familiar, but she couldn't be sure. The caring in his eyes made her want to agree, to nod, to pretend that she knew he was talking about her. Still, she couldn't quite get there. Not when everything felt so uncertain. So, unknown. When she didn't reply, he stayed near the foot of the bed. How are you feeling? Blankets over her lower body kept her from seeing what damage she had to her legs. But her right ankle ached, and her head pounded in time with her heartbeat. She reached up and felt a small bandage on her head. A head injury. That was bad, right? What had happened? She was in the hospital, so obviously she was hurt or sick. Had she been in some kind of accident? Had she been attacked? Not knowing scared her more than the fact that she was laid up in a hospital bed. Not wanting to think about how much she didn't know, she focused on her pounding head. But that only made her grimace. Do you want morphine? The man asked, his forehead creased. Morphine? Would that knock her out or just take the edge off? She wanted the pain to vanish, but she also wanted her wits about her especially with this stranger hovering around her. Maybe she should ask him to leave. But what if he had answers? I... she began, but her voice was scratchy. Swiveling her head to find some water, when it was just out of reach, she closed her eyes in frustration. The man was by her side in two long strides. Here. He held the straw to her lips. Just sips. She complied without argument and when she'd had enough, she leaned away from the straw. The man stepped back, taking the glass away. Lifting her gaze to his face, when his gray eyes met hers with an unflinching stare, a stare that said, I know you well, she felt unsettled. How could he know her when she had no clue who he was? Wanting to focus anywhere but his eyes, eyes that seemed to see into her very soul, she turned her attention to the rest of him, he was tall, over six feet, and he was built. Powerful biceps were visible in his short-sleeved t-shirt, and the way the fabric lay against his stomach hinted at six-pack abs. His dark hair was cut short, and his strong jaw was barely visible under his beard. But those eyes, something about them drew her in. He was attractive, no doubt about that. But that didn't help. She still had no idea who he was. Who are you? He took a step back, his brows knitting together. I'm Greg. A muscle worked in his jaw. Your husband. Husband? She was married? To him? Why didn't she recognize him? This all felt wrong. Narrowing her eyes, she studied him, looking for any sign of deceit. Was he telling the truth? but why would he lie? When she didn't reply, he sent her a long, pained look before turning toward the window. Trees swayed outside the hospital window in the light summer breeze. It was June in Sacramento, a perfect day for a hike or a picnic or some other fun activity. Had it just been a week ago that he'd taken Olivia to Lake Tahoe? How was it possible that their lives had changed, had tilted, so dramatically overnight. He thought back to the phone call he'd received the afternoon before, telling him that his wife had been in a car accident, that she'd been rushed to the hospital, that she was unconscious. He'd dropped everything and raced to her side. 
He hadn't left since. He turned back to the hospital bed. Olivia looked so small, so vulnerable. It had always been important to her to have her hair and makeup perfect. But now? Her lovely face was bruised and her hair, her beautiful blonde hair was a mess. Tangled and unkempt with a bandage covering the space where the stitches had been sewn in. He would have offered to brush out those tangles if it wasn't for the way she was looking at him. Like he was a stranger. Don't you know who I am? He asked. The bewildered look in her eyes said it all. She had no idea who he was. Devastated, he held back a frown. What happened? She was clearly avoiding his question. Why am I here? Swallowing over the knot in his throat, Greg exhaled through his nose but kept his distance. The way she'd recoiled when he'd approached her bedside earlier had shaken him. How could she not know who he was? Putting aside his hurt feelings, he focused on her and what she needed, on what she'd asked. You were in a car accident. Her forehead furrowed. A car accident? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I wasn't there. Remembering the terror he'd felt when he'd heard the words that his wife had been in an accident, Greg paused. They, that is, the police, they said your car was in a ditch. He paused again. There were no witnesses, at least none that have come forward. The story of Sacramento Viper's wide receiver Greg Sinclair's wife being in a serious car accident was all over the news. If anyone had seen anything, surely they would have come forward. Although, what did it matter? Knowing exactly how she'd crashed wouldn't change the outcome, wouldn't fix her broken ankle or her concussion, wouldn't erase the bruises that dotted her face or ease the aches she must be feeling. You called me... Olivia. Her forehead creased in clear confusion. Is that my name? She didn't even know her own name? He needed to talk to the doctors. But first, he needed to answer her question. No reason for her to see how alarmed he was. Forcing himself to keep a neutral expression, he nodded. Yes, your name is Olivia Sinclair. He watched her face, seeing her roll the name around in her mind. Should he tell her more? Tell her how they'd met? How they'd fallen in love? Would that jog her memory? Kind of desperate for her to recognize him, to know him, he said, We've been married for two years. We got married. She shook her head so violently that he clamped his mouth shut. No, I'm not. I'm not married. She practically glared at him. I don't know you. Pain sliced through him, sharp and deep. It was as if someone was taking an ice pick and slamming it through his heart over and over. It was worse than when he'd discovered. No, he wasn't going to think about that right now. He couldn't handle that much pain all at once. This was bad enough all on its own. I'm your husband. His voice was barely audible. He wasn't sure she'd even heard him. She was staring at her hands in her lap, her fists opening and closing, the look on her face telling him what she hadn't said in words. He was not welcome. He was lying to her. She knew it. There was no way she would marry a man she wasn't crazy in love with. And if she was crazy in love with him, there was no way she would forget him. Therefore, this man couldn't be her husband. Could not. She heard him mutter something that sounded like, I'm your husband. But she didn't acknowledge it. With a quick glance at him, she could see the hurt in the way he stood. Shoulders hunched, grimace on his face, eyes shifting away from her and toward the window. She couldn't worry about his feelings. Not when her mind was racing with panic at not being able to remember, well, much of anything. I want to talk to the doctor. She looked at the man, Greg, then looked toward the door before swiveling her gaze back to Greg. You need to leave. That pained look again. Sudden empathy flooded her and she added in a soft voice, Please. His mouth was pinched, but he nodded before turning and walking out of the room. Shoulders sagging in relief to be alone with her speeding thoughts. She was gratified when only a few minutes later a man she assumed was the doctor walked into the room. How are you feeling, Olivia? Two people had called her Olivia. The more she thought about it, the more right it felt. 
Yes, that was her name. Her first name. Greg had said her last name was Sinclair. That definitely did not feel right, which made her doubt him all the more. Still, she was grateful to have the mystery of her first name definitively solved. She turned her focus to the doctor. Not great, doctor. She let the word trail off in question. He smiled. Dr. Richmond. Thomas Richmond. He held out his hand and Olivia shook it. You've been through some trauma. She'd figured as much, but she was glad to talk to someone who didn't have any emotions tied to her. What injuries do I have? You hit your head. On a rock, according to the paramedics. That caused a concussion. You needed five stitches. On a rock? I thought I was in a car accident. Evidently, you managed to climb out of the car and partway up the ditch where you must have slipped and hit your head. Oh. This was all so strange. So disturbingly strange. Not to remember something so traumatic happening. You also broke your ankle. Your fibula. We're not sure if that was during the accident or when you slipped afterwards. He paused. Your husband said you're having trouble remembering things. Her husband? Could he actually be her husband? Why would the doctor lie about that? But how could she have a husband? She wasn't even dating anyone. Can you tell me what year it is? She made a guess and the doctor frowned. Is that wrong? She asked. He smiled tightly. About five years off. Wait. Did that mean she'd lost the last five years? How about your date of birth? Thinking hard, she told him the date she recalled. He smiled. That's right. Feeling like a student who had aced a test, she smiled. But then her smile immediately dimmed. I'm... I'm 23, right? Even as she asked, she knew that was wrong. At least based on what the actual year was. He shook his head. No, you're 28. So she had lost five years. How was that possible? With a reassuring smile, Dr. Richmond said, I'd like to do some tests. See what we can see. What good would tests do? Would they bring back her memory? Can you fix this? She asked. My memory? He was quiet. With time, there's a very good chance that it will return. That was something, at least. And she held on to that sliver of hope with both hands. Chapter 2 After a fitful night's sleep, Olivia woke to find the man who claimed to be her husband, Greg, asleep on a cot near her bed. Husband or not, it was sweet of him to stay by her side. She needed to get up and use the bathroom, but with her broken ankle it would be difficult. The doctor said the break didn't require surgery, but he wanted her to keep weight off of the ankle for the next six weeks while wearing a boot that would keep the bone stable. Then she would be able to start putting weight on it while wearing the boot. In the meantime, she would have to use crutches, something she'd never had to do before in her life. Not wanting to wake Greg, because she had a feeling he would insist on helping her and she didn't know him well enough to have him getting that close to her, she quietly pulled the covers back and got herself into a sitting position on the side of the bed. The crutches were right there but she took a moment to let the dizziness pass before reaching out to grab them with one hand. They clanged together and she turned to look at Greg, whose cot was on the other side of the bed from where she sat. He stirred. She froze while waiting to see if he would wake. He didn't, so she pulled the crutches to her side and slowly got to her feet. That is, foot. With difficulty, she made her way to the bathroom. At first, she avoided the mirror. Would it even be her looking back? But then she couldn't stop herself. Gazing at her reflection, she recognized herself. Same blue eyes, same small nose, same full lips. But something was different. It wasn't just the bruises on her face or the tangles in her hair or the bandage on her scalp. Tiny lines fanned out from the corners of her eyes. They were subtle, but when she looked closely, she could see them. She looked... Older. Well, according to Dr. Richmond, she was older. Five years older. The thought that she'd lost five years of her life was, to say the least, disconcerting. I'll get them back, 
she told herself. I have to. Lips pressed together in determination, she opened the door to the bathroom. And there was Greg, standing right outside. Why didn't you wake me? I could have helped you. The thought of this stranger helping her into the bathroom was more than she could stomach. I don't need your help. He flinched, but not able to deal with his feelings, she turned away and crutched back to the bed. Slipping between the covers, she wondered when she would be able to go home. Then an alarming thought hit her. Where was her home? Sneaking a peek at Greg, she wondered if he would insist on taking her to his home, that he would claim it was her home. Could it be? Could he be telling the truth? Was she married to him? The doctor seemed to believe it. Had there been some sort of proof the hospital had required Greg to produce? Proof that they were married? To allow him to sleep in her room? Did he have some proof he could show her? Greg hadn't slept well. Part of the reason was the cot. Too short for his six-foot-two-inch frame and just not comfortable at all. But the main reason was his hyper-awareness of Olivia. Every time she'd turned over or made a noise in her sleep, he'd jolted awake. Except when she had actually gotten up. He'd missed that one. She'd always been independent. That was one of the things he loved about her. But flat out telling him that she didn't need his help? That stung. Do you have any pictures? She asked as she pulled the sheet up to her chest. Anytime she paid him a bit of attention, he was riveted, desperate for her to acknowledge him. Pictures? What kind of pictures? Proving that we're married. She wanted proof? Wow. Then again, if she had no memory of him or their marriage, he couldn't exactly blame her. Still, it was jarring. Uh, yeah, sure. Can you get them? Now? She nodded. Was this a trick? Was she planning on getting out of here and disappearing while he was gone? Would she call? No, he wasn't going to go there. If she had no memory of him or their marriage, then she must have no memory of what she'd done or of who she'd done it with. Curling his lip in disgust and anger, Greg stared at his lap. He had to get his emotions under control. He had to focus on Olivia and what she needed, despite the way she had betrayed him. Forcing a neutral expression, he lifted his eyes and appraised her. There was no guile there. It appeared that she truly needed him to prove he was who he said he was. Okay, he could do that. All right, I'll be back in about an hour. She stared at him, her expression unreadable. Thank you. The blue of her eyes captured him the way it always did, and with a nod, he turned and left the room. Chapter 3 When can I get out of here? Olivia asked Dr. Richmond the moment he stepped into her room. Greg wasn't back yet, and though Olivia's future was completely uncertain, she didn't like being in the hospital. Somehow she believed that she would get better faster if she was somewhere she'd been before even if that was a place she didn't remember. She had to believe that her memory would return, desperately hoped that it would, clung to that hope with everything she had. You'll be discharged today, Dr. Richmond said with a smile. But first I've ordered two tests. Once you've completed those, I'll sign your discharge papers. He glanced around. Where's Greg? Not wanting to admit that she'd asked for proof that he was her husband, she hedged. He, uh, he'll be back in a bit. All right. Someone will come for you in a few minutes for those tests. What kind of tests? I've ordered an MRI and a CT scan. Those will give me pictures of your brain. That seemed harmless. All right? Once those tests are done, you'll be free to leave. Thank you. With a nod, Dr. Richmond left. Olivia was determined to dress herself so that she would be ready to leave as soon as possible. Even though she had yet to see the proof that Greg was her husband, just the fact that he'd been willing to get the proof comforted her. By the time she was dressed, she was worn out. Keeping the weight off of her right foot made everything more difficult. And it didn't help that her head pounded. She didn't know why, but when she'd been offered stronger pain meds, she'd immediately declined. It had been an almost visceral reaction. A short time later... A woman came with a wheelchair to take her for her tests, and when Olivia returned to her room, 
Greg was there, a photo album on his lap. Olivia moved from the wheelchair to the bed, and the woman left her alone with Greg. How did the tests go? She didn't want to talk about the tests, not when her past was about to be presented to her. Focus riveted to the album, she glanced at Greg. Can I look? He nodded as he handed it to her. Yes. She stared at the closed book now resting on her lap. She was about to see pictures of herself doing things she had no memory of. Important things like getting married. Distressed at the thought, she drew in a deep breath and slowly exhaled. She wanted to study these pictures without Greg looking over her shoulder waiting for her to suddenly remember him. She glanced at Greg again. I'd like to be alone. Greg hesitated, but only for a moment. Of course. He looked toward the hallway. I'll, uh, I'll see if your discharge papers are ready. Olivia watched Greg leave. He hadn't said anything about where he would take her once she was discharged. She'd assumed he was planning on taking her home with him, but what if she was wrong? Panic flooded her. If he didn't take her home, where would she go? She'd gone from being wary of him to realizing she needed him. Squeezing her eyes closed as she gained control over her emotions, Olivia took a moment, and then she focused on the album on her lap. With the sounds and smells of the hospital fading into the background, she silently opened the cover, and when she saw a picture of a radiant couple in their wedding clothes, the bride in a fitted white gown and the groom in a black tuxedo, gazing lovingly into each other's eyes, everything around her disappeared. She was the woman in the picture, and the man was definitely Greg. The evidence was right there in front of her. They were married. Stunned that she could have forgotten something so important, she wondered what else of importance had fled her mind. Not ready to delve that deeply into her worries, she turned the page, then another, then another. She soaked up each and every image, each and every smile, each and every look of love. She'd been in love with Greg. That was abundantly clear. And he'd been in love with her. Was he still? She had no reason to think that he wasn't. She studied the other people in the pictures. Who were they? She didn't recognize anyone. Then an image of her mother filled her mind. She remembered her. Why wasn't she in any of these pictures? Why hadn't she come to see Olivia at the hospital? Her mother loved her. Of that, she had no doubt. If it was possible for her to come to her daughter's side, she would have. Which could only mean one thing. Something must have happened to her mother in the last five years. Something that Olivia couldn't remember. How could she forget something so critical, so life-altering? And what had happened exactly? Could her mother be dead? At the thought, tears flooded her eyes and slid down her cheeks. Losing her memory was bad enough, but losing her mother, it was too much to bear. Quietly sobbing, Olivia tried to guess at what had happened, but it was an exercise in frustration. After several minutes, she filled her lungs with air, held her breath for a moment, then slowly exhaled. She did this over and over until her emotions were manageable. Then, chest tight with grief, she mentally shook herself. She shouldn't jump to conclusions. There could be any number of reasons why her mother wasn't in any of the pictures. She didn't want Greg to know she'd been upset, so she went into the bathroom and washed away all evidence of her sorrow, then came back out and settled into a chair before placing the album on her lap. She would have to ask him about her mother. She had no choice. He was the only person she knew, the only person who would have answers but not yet. She couldn't face devastating news about her mother. Not just yet. Sensing that someone had come into the room, she lifted her head and saw Greg standing in the doorway, a question on his face. He was so handsome, so strong, and she knew now that she'd loved him once. At least the woman in the album had loved him. But she didn't feel a connection to that woman. Other than looking like her and sharing her name— the woman could be her twin, a completely separate person who happened to share her DNA. Except that Olivia didn't have any siblings. Of that, she was certain. 
She glanced at the album on her lap before turning back to Greg. I don't... She shook her head. I don't remember any of this. The hope on his face melted away as a muscle moved in his jaw. Will you... That is... I hope you'll let me take you home. Let me take care of you. His offer flooded her with relief. Yes, I would appreciate that. A small smile lifted her lips. Thank you. Are you ready to go home? Home. That was such a loaded word. Regardless, she was ready to get out of the hospital. Yes. Greg smiled. Okay. I'll have a nurse bring a wheelchair. Wanting to lighten the mood, Olivia glanced toward her crutches. Good, because I'm not great with those things. They're just temporary. He spoke with such confidence that Olivia believed him. Comforted, she watched as he gathered her few belongings. It was only when she'd agreed to let him take her home that Greg realized how worried he'd been that she would tell him no, that she never wanted to see him again. Now, as he set the plastic hospital bag on the bed, he tried not to think too far ahead to what would happen if she didn't get her memory back, if she changed her mind about letting him take care of her, if she left him. Here you go, Olivia, a nurse said as she rolled the wheelchair into the room. Not wanting to get into Olivia's space before she was ready, Greg watched the nurse help Olivia into the wheelchair. All set? The nurse asked. Yes. The nurse turned to Greg for confirmation, and he nodded. They set off, with Greg following the nurse as she pushed Olivia's wheelchair. When they reached the ground floor and began heading down a back hallway, Greg was glad Olivia didn't question why they weren't leaving through the main lobby. He didn't want to confuse things by having to explain that the media was outside waiting for them to emerge. Since she had no memory of him, he was confident she had no idea he was the famous Greg Sinclair, wide receiver for the Sacramento Vipers. She had enough to digest without having to think about that aspect of their lives. She'd never been overly impressed by his celebrity. There was no reason to think she would care about it now. What he needed to focus on was helping her to heal and to recover her memory. Chapter 4 So focused on dealing with her aches and pains and her empty memory banks, Olivia hardly noticed the scenery as Greg drove them toward a house that she hoped would hold the key to her past. Maybe when she walked into the home she'd shared with him, saw the space that had once been familiar, smelled the scents that had once been part of her existence, maybe then she would start to remember. Here we are, Greg announced a while later. That caught Olivia's attention, and as Greg pulled up to a gate, punched in a code, then drove up a circular driveway toward a large, beautiful house. Her eyebrows furrowed. Was this where he lived? Where she lived? This was a dream house. The type of house she'd always admired from afar. The type of house she'd never imagined living in. A lake was visible behind the property, and trees were dotted around the gorgeous landscape. She turned to Greg as he parked his white SUV next to a walkway that led to the front door. Is this your house? He shut off the engine and turned to her with a lopsided grin. This is our house. Our house, she thought. Despite her uncertainty about everything, she liked the sound of that. Liked the idea of knowing she had a place she could call home. Greg jumped out of the car and walked around to the passenger side, taking the crutches out of the back seat before opening her door and holding them out to her. Thank you. Taking them from him, she glanced at him before slowly sliding out of the car and landing on her good foot. She could tell that he wanted to help her, but she was grateful he held back. Using the crutches, she followed him to the front door. He inserted his key and moments later the front door swung open. Olivia crutched her way through the entry and into the family room, overwhelmed by the elegant beauty of the space. Wooden beams emphasized the vaulted ceiling and the built-in bookshelves on either side of the fireplace gave the space a cozy feel. Through tall, sliding glass doors, the lake behind the property was visible. The space was perfection, but it was completely unfamiliar. Stopping in the middle of the room, she turned to Greg. Are you sure I live here? she asked. A frown tugged at his lips. Yes, I'm sure. We built this place together, Olivia. His jaw tightened. 
You picked out every fixture, every paint color, every... He swept his arm toward the couch. Piece of furniture. Why couldn't she remember? Frustrated beyond all reason, all she could do was turn her back on Greg and stare at the lake. Do you want to go outside? Not knowing what else to do, she nodded without turning around. Greg opened one of the sliders and she made her way outside. Even the back patio was stunning. Coffered ceilings covered the expansive space, and ceiling fans slowly spun. An outdoor fireplace adorned one wall, and a comfortable-looking seating area was positioned to maximize the view. Olivia crutched over to the couch and slowly settled onto the cushions. Are you hungry? Or thirsty? Looking at the man who was trying so hard to take care of her, she nodded. Yes, thank you. He looked relieved, like he was glad to have something he could actually do for her. She watched him go, not able to stop herself from admiring his athletic build. A spark of attraction lit inside her, and her lips lifted in a small smile. Good thing she was attracted to him. He was her husband, after all. Her gaze swept the space, and she wondered how they could afford such a gorgeous home. What did they do for a living? Did she have a fabulous career that she couldn't remember? Maybe she was a doctor or a lawyer. Or maybe she was a model. Chuckling at that last one, she shook her head. Maybe she ran her own business. That thought troubled her. What if this accident affected their income? If she couldn't remember what she did for a living, how could she possibly go back to work? Would they have to sell the house because of her? Where would they go? She needed to ask Greg about their financial situation, but somehow it felt too... personal. Almost like asking a stranger how much money he earned. She couldn't do it. Not yet. She had enough to think about without worrying about their finances. Greg watched Olivia as he made sandwiches. He couldn't imagine what she must be thinking, what she had to be going through. What would it be like to forget so much about your life? To have nothing be familiar. To not even remember your own spouse. That's what hurt the most. At least she'd agreed to come home. To the home they'd created together. With any luck, being here would help her memory come back. Except there was one thing he didn't want her to remember. That she'd cheated on him. Clenching his jaw as his nostrils flared, he thought back to the week before her accident. That's when he'd confronted her. And that's when she'd denied it vehemently. And when he'd asked her to explain, she'd refused, telling him it was a private matter, that he had to trust her. How dare she ask that of him? He knew the truth. He'd seen the proof. Why had she argued so passionately against what he knew? Why wouldn't she admit the truth? Tearing his gaze away from his wife, he cut the sandwiches into halves. Didn't matter now. If she didn't remember that they were married then surely she didn't remember the scumbag she'd cheated on him with. Fury built inside him, but he tamped it down. It would do no good to let his emotions take over now. It was up to him to help her heal. Once her memory returned, then they could hash it out, see if their marriage could be saved. His focus went back to her. He loved her with all his heart. He had since the moment he'd met her. He would do anything to help her, anything to save their marriage. Anything. Chapter 5 Here you go. Greg held out a glass of lemonade and a plate with a sandwich and a small bunch of grapes. Olivia took the proffered food with a smile, grateful that he was willing to care for her. Especially when he knew she didn't remember him. You should elevate that ankle, he said. Then he rearranged the furniture, stacking pillows for her to set her booted ankle on. He was right. She knew he was. She had to do her part to take care of herself. After setting her leg on the pillows, she looked at the plate on her lap. Her appetite was nearly non-existent, but she knew she needed to keep her strength up. Thank you. She wanted to ask him what had happened to her mother, but not ready to hear about a tragedy that she couldn't deal with yet. She held back. She had enough to focus on right now. When you're done eating, you need to lay down. Keep your ankle above your heart. How did he know so much about these things? Was he a doctor? That would explain the beautiful house. All right, she replied. 
Nibbling at the sandwich, turkey and avocado on whole wheat, she watched Greg out of the corner of her eye as he sat in an adjacent chair and took a large bite of his sandwich. This is good, she said. He smiled. It's your favorite. Startled to realize he knew more about her than she knew about herself, her appetite disappeared completely, but she continued nibbling, no reason to appear ungrateful. How are you feeling? The truth was she didn't feel very good at all. But what did she expect? She'd been in an accident. All right, I guess, she replied. She set the barely eaten sandwich on her plate. Do you want something for the pain? Just some Tylenol. Will that be strong enough? I think so. For some unknown reason, the thought of taking anything stronger made her distinctly uncomfortable. All right, he said as he stood. She watched him go. When he returned, he held out his hand and Olivia saw two capsules in his palm. She lifted her eyes to his. Just Tylenol, right? He nodded. Just Tylenol. His gaze was locked on hers, and for a moment she was transfixed, unable to tear her eyes from his. Captivated by the frank look of love shining from his eyes, she felt her pulse flutter. Thank you, she whispered as she took the pills from his hand, careful not to touch him longer than necessary. But even that brief moment of contact sent her pulse careening. He stayed in front of her as she placed the pills on her tongue, chasing them down with a large swallow of lemonade. His gaze slid to the plate on her lap before going back to her face. Do you want me to take that? Yes, I'm sorry I didn't eat more. I'm just not very hungry. He crouched beside her, putting them eye to eye. Olivia. His voice was soft, his gaze tender. The way he looked at her, like she was a great treasure, made her heart ache. How could she have forgotten this man who so obviously adored her, who was so handsome, who was her husband? It defied reason. His focus never wavered from her face. You don't need to apologize. All you need to do is focus on getting better, okay? She nodded. If you need anything, anything at all, you just let me know. I'm not going anywhere. But don't you have to go to work? She hadn't meant to sound rude. Her face heated. I'm sorry. That's... that's none of my business. His lips curved into a smile. It is your business, Olivia. Then he mock frowned. And what did I tell you about apologizing? I'm sorry. She laughed. Right. He smiled. In answer to your very reasonable question, no. I don't have to go to work. At least not for a while. Why not? She wanted to ask. But even though he'd said it was her business, asking would feel too much like probing into something she had no right to dig into. But there was something she wanted. Do you have more pictures you can show me? Of my past? His face brightened. Yes. You spent a lot of time putting many albums together. He chuckled. I'm glad all your hard work can be put to good use. He stood, taking the plate from her lap. Are you sure you're up to looking at pictures right now? Actually, she was exhausted. But more than that, she was desperate to get her memory back. Desperate enough to force her exhaustion aside and look at pictures. I'd like to look at them. Tell you what, let's get you settled in bed where you can elevate your ankle, and then I'll gather up the albums and bring them to you. Too tired to argue, Olivia nodded. In all honesty, her body was demanding that she rest. He took the glass of lemonade from her outstretched hand and set it, along with the plate, on a table. Then he held out her crutches. You're doing pretty good with these things. She didn't want to be good with them. She wanted to ditch them. Opening and closing her hands, she hoped her sore palms would get used to using them. Watching Olivia carefully make her way into the house, Greg wanted nothing more than to scoop her into his arms and carry her. She looked so frail. Playing football, he'd gotten hurt plenty of times and it had never been pleasant, but seeing his wife injured broke his heart, made him want to take the pain away from her. Since that wasn't possible, he would do the next best thing. He would do everything he could to ease her pain, to make her life bearable, to help her remember her life, to remember him. He followed her inside and down a hallway. Make a left into that room. That's our bedroom.
At his pronouncement, Olivia froze. Our bedroom, she thought. Why did those words make her want to flee? Obviously, it was because she didn't remember the man who said them, the man whose life she evidently shared. She had to get past that, had to focus on what she knew. Greg was her husband, even if she didn't remember him. He was trying hard to take care of her. He seemed like a good person. Had to be a good person if she'd married him, right? Anyway, just because it was their room didn't mean she had to allow him to share it with her. She would just tell him she wasn't comfortable having him there. Swallowing over the nervousness that enveloped her, she worked her way over to the bed and sat on the edge, then hoisted herself into the center before propping herself against the pillows. You need to elevate that ankle, Greg said as he arranged a stack of pillows. Now that she was sitting on this extremely comfortable bed, a bed she was glad she'd picked out in that other life she couldn't remember, exhaustion crashed over her. You know, she said, I think I'm going to take a nap. That's a great idea. Not wanting to flat out tell him to leave, she added, Would you mind closing the door? Uh, yeah, sure. He tossed her a smile, then he turned and walked out of the room, closing the door behind him. Once she was alone, Olivia let her gaze wander the room, hoping against hope that something would jump out at her and say, You remember me. You got me at such and such place. But as she took in each piece of lovely furniture, each knick-knack on the dresser, each picture hanging on the wall, each item stayed stubbornly quiet. Sighing in resignation that regaining her memory would not happen quickly or easily, Olivia slid down until she was flat on her back. Then she set her booted foot on the stack of pillows. Pressure from the boot made the ball of her foot go numb. Desperately wishing she could remove the boot, but too afraid of making her broken ankle worse by doing so. She loosened the Velcro straps that lay across her shin, then wiggled her toes. Finally, she settled back against the cushions and tried to fall asleep. An image of Greg filled her mind, and close behind it was the memory of the wedding pictures she'd seen earlier. At least she was remembering what had happened to her since she'd woken in the hospital. The picture of her radiant face on her wedding day crowded out all other thoughts. She'd been happy that day. The incandescent glow of love had been unmistakable. Maybe she could fall in love with Greg again. The thought gave her hope, and as she finally drifted into sleep, her worries drifted away too. Chapter 6 Olivia woke up screaming. Someone was chasing her. She didn't know who and she didn't know why, but it was so real that she was convinced it was actually happening. What's wrong? Greg asked as he burst into the room and raced to her side. Are you okay? Eyes wide, mind confused, Olivia was frantic. I didn't know! I didn't know! Greg's eyebrows puckered. Didn't know what? What are you talking about? The dream floated away, out of her reach. And the more she tried to grab it, the more elusive it became. All that remained was the feeling of panic, of knowing she was in mortal danger. Had it been a nightmare, or could it be... a memory? Shivering uncontrollably, Olivia wrapped her arms around herself. What was going on? Why did Olivia seem so upset? Had she remembered something? Greg pulled the blanket up and tucked it around her shoulders, all the while wanting to draw her into his arms and warm her with his body. Can I get you anything? Something for the pain? Something to warm you up? Anything? Her head jerked from side to side. No. Do you want me to... leave you alone? He hated that she kept sending him away, but he had to respect that. Had to give her time. To his surprise and delight, she shook her head. No. I... I don't want to be alone right now. How about I grab some of those albums? We can look at them together. Her face brightened. Yes. I'd like that. He was back in a flash. Olivia figured he'd gathered the albums while she'd been sleeping. She sat up, but didn't make room for him to sit beside her. He would have to be satisfied with pulling up a chair and sitting next to the bed. He set a stack of albums on the foot of the bed, then lifted the one from the top and set it on her lap. His gaze went to the tiny bit of space by her side. Pretending she didn't notice that he was looking for room to sit, 
She opened the album. To her relief, he took the hint, walking across the room to where a pair of armchairs sat beside a small table. With no evident effort, he lifted the bulky chair and carried it over to the bed, setting it close to where Olivia was looking at the album. She hadn't meant to, but as he'd carried the chair, her gaze had slid to his powerful biceps, sending a burst of heat to her insides. His fit and athletic body was just one more thing about him that she liked. But there had to be some things about him that bugged her, right? That was normal in a marriage, right? Not that she would know, since she couldn't even remember being married. Holding back a sigh, she focused on the images in front of her. Pictures of the two of them standing on pristine white sand with a stunning blue ocean behind them. Their arms wrapped around each other. That was on our honeymoon. Where did we go? Feeling a little foolish for asking, Olivia avoided looking at Greg, staring at the pictures instead. The Turks and Caicos Islands. She nodded like she was familiar with the place, which was ridiculous. She'd never heard the name before. Well, obviously she had since she had gone there. She just didn't remember hearing it. It's gorgeous there. We can go there again. Chest tightening, Olivia didn't respond. He was moving too fast. In her reality, she'd just met him the day before. She wasn't ready to commit to taking a vacation with him. When you're ready, Greg added, evidently noticing the way her body had tensed. Ignoring his comment, because she didn't want to say something hurtful, but she didn't want to acknowledge his suggestion either. She turned her thoughts to the album she'd looked at in the hospital and remembered how distraught she'd been when she'd imagined her mother being dead. Maybe her mother had been at the wedding. Maybe Olivia had just missed seeing her in the pictures. Maybe her mother was perfectly fine and she hadn't come to the hospital because, well, Olivia didn't know why. Desperate to have her fears erased and her mind put at ease, Olivia decided to take another look at the album. Can I see the pictures from... She let her words trail off. She couldn't quite bring herself to say out loud that they'd had a wedding. From the album you showed me earlier? At the hospital? Our wedding album? He asked, clearly having no issue with stating the facts. Forcing herself to meet his eyes, which were focused steadily on her, she nodded. Those gray eyes. They did something to her heart. Made her want to remember everything about him everything about their lives. He stood and went to the pile of albums, then traded the one from their honeymoon with their wedding album. Olivia opened the cover and saw again how happy she'd been. Pushing down her frustration at feeling like she was looking at a stranger's wedding, she began turning the pages, on the lookout for her mother. When she got to the end, and was certain she hadn't missed her, but that she was in none of the pictures, she turned to Greg, who was sitting in his chair but leaning on the bed so that only a few inches separated them. Catching her breath to feel him so close to her, when she considered that maybe she'd been right initially, that something must have happened to her mother, her heart lurched. Taking a moment to compose herself, she asked, Where was my mother? Greg's eyes widened in clear surprise. You remember your mother? Of course. It seemed absurd that she could forget the woman who'd raised her on her own. The woman she loved fiercely. The woman she would do anything for. What do you remember about her? What kind of a question was that, she wondered. Lifting one shoulder in a shrug, she said, I remember everything about her. A look of sadness washed across his face. How can you know that? His voice was soft, but the question still irritated her. Mostly because he was right. A scoffing sound left her throat as she closed the album. What am I not remembering about her? She asked. What didn't she know? She wondered. Your mother's a wonderful woman, Olivia. I know that. What wasn't he telling her? Then she realized that he'd used the present tense when he'd referred to her mother. With a rush of relief, her fears that her mother had died evaporated. Even so, something was definitely wrong. But, she asked, why wasn't she at our, our wedding? There, she'd said the words out loud, admitted that there had been a wedding. We don't have to do this now. Do what? Frustration laced her words. 
Don't coddle me. I need to know what's going on with my mother. Sighing, Greg nodded. Okay. Looking away, he steepled his fingers against his lips like he was trying to figure out the best way to share bad news. Bracing herself, Olivia gripped the comforter. Finally, Greg removed his fingers from his mouth like he was giving himself permission to speak. Then he faced her. Your mother has a drug problem. Chapter 7 Was this some kind of game? Some kind of trick? Olivia didn't know what to think. The idea that her mother had a drug problem was so ludicrous as to make her nearly burst out laughing. Except that the look on Greg's face was deadly serious. But he had to be joking. There was simply no way her mother, a straighter arrow didn't exist, would have a problem with drugs. What did that mean, anyway? A drug problem. Her mother hated taking pills, always had. Her mother didn't even drink. Saying her mother had a drug problem was like saying the sky was green, or that the sun was ice cold. It was out of the realm of possibility. Couldn't happen. Incomprehensible. Why on earth was Greg saying this about her mother? What was wrong with him? What was he trying to do? Why was he lying? Absolutely livid that he would lie to her about something so important, lie to her about the only person she actually remembered, Olivia did the only thing she could. Gritting her teeth, she glared at Greg. Get out! Greg recoiled, his eyes widening as his back went ramrod straight. What? You heard me! Get out! She set her jaw. Now! His nostrils flared, then he leapt to his feet, and with a frown in her direction, he walked out, softly closing the door behind him. Good riddance, she thought. Then she shoved their wedding album away from her. It crashed to the floor and she heard a page tear. Trembling with rage, she straightened the comforter as she tried to think. Why would he tell her that her mother had a drug problem? Was he trying to keep her mother away? Give her a reason why her mother hadn't contacted her? An excuse? Was he trying to isolate her? But why? Why would he do that? Unless he wasn't really her husband. But the pictures... Though she'd forgotten much, she had a vague memory that computers could do things with pictures. Change them or something. Maybe all the pictures he'd shown her had been faked. But why go to all that trouble? What would be the reason? Maybe she was rich and he was trying to take her money. Maybe this house was hers and he was trying to trick her. Make her believe they were married. Just so he could rob her. On her guard now, she didn't know what to do, didn't know what to think. Glancing around, she didn't see a phone. Not that she knew who to call. She could call the police, but she wasn't sure they'd be able to help her. Not when the doctor also claimed that Greg was her husband. Was the doctor in on it? Feeling helpless and vulnerable, Olivia closed her eyes and tried to calm herself. Maybe the best course of action was to play along, pretend like everything was fine, that she believed whatever Greg told her. And when her memory finally returned, she would know the truth. In the meantime, she wouldn't do anything rash, wouldn't sign any paperwork or do anything else that would help him take advantage of her. Most of all, she would have to stay on her toes and not let the attraction she felt for him get the best of her. Because she was certain he was counting on that very thing. Greg hadn't wanted to tell her about her mother. He'd known she wouldn't take it well, and he'd been right. But wow. Her reaction had been way worse than he'd imagined it would be. She thought he was making it up. That was clear. He only wished he was making it up. Not that he would do such a thing. He would have to prove to her that she could trust him, that he was telling the truth. And he knew just how he would do it. A soft knock at the door a while later startled Olivia. She'd been dozing, but with the sound of Greg's arrival, she was wide awake. Putting on her game face, she called out, Come in! He cracked the door open and poked his head around it. The look of distress on his face almost made her reconsider her doubts. Almost. But for all she knew, he was a fabulous actor. She couldn't let her guard down, not for a minute. Is this a good time? He asked as if she might have something pressing to do. Forcing down her earlier anger as it bubbled to the surface, she nodded. He walked in, 
a sheaf of papers in one hand. Eyes narrowing, Olivia watched his every move. What's that? Was he already going to try to get her to sign her life, her fortune, away? Just something I want to show you. His gaze fell to the album on the floor. He picked it up and gently set it on the pile at the foot of the bed. Wary of his motives, she tried to ignore how handsome he was. Because it seemed the more she wanted to ignore her attraction to him, the stronger it grew. That face. Those biceps. The masculinity poured off of him, made her pulse race and her body long for his arms to be around her. Especially when she saw the kindness in his eyes, the love. What is it? Annoyed with herself for not being able to control the almost visceral reaction she was having to him, her words came out sharper than she'd intended. He gestured toward the chair beside her bed. Okay if I sit? Shrugging, she tried to see what was on the pages while pretending she wasn't terribly interested in them. When he caught her looking, she shifted her focus to his face, a challenge in her eyes. A soft smile tugged his lips upward. I hope you know I would never lie to you. How could she possibly know that, she thought. She'd only known him for two days. He held up the papers in his hand. I hope these documents convince you I'm telling you the truth. About your mother. A pained expression swept across his face. I wish I wasn't. I really do, but... He set the pile of papers on her lap. See for yourself. Now she didn't want to look, because if he was telling the truth and her mother really did have a drug problem, her amnesia would be the least of her worries. Just tell me what they say, she said, refusing to look at the documents resting on her legs. Lips pursing, he exhaled through his nose. All right. A couple of years before I met you, your mother fell down some stairs and hurt her back. Badly. Olivia held up her hand. How do you know this? Tilting his head, he frowned. You told me. She hated this. Him telling her things she'd said, things she'd done, things she had zero memory of saying or doing. It made her feel like she'd lost her mind. Go on. Her pain was pretty severe, so the doctor prescribed her something to give her relief. Specifically, OxyContin. So her mother had taken pain pills. So what? People did it all the time. Her own doctor had prescribed pain pills for her, although she wasn't sure exactly what they were. And? She became addicted. Olivia's head snapped back. Addicted? Yes. It happens a lot with prescription drugs. In fact, I think that's why you... Well, why you didn't want anything stronger than Tylenol for your pain. Because maybe you... I don't know. Somehow remember what happened to your mother... Not able to go that far, she ignored his suggestion that that was why she'd refused prescription painkillers. So, you're saying her drug problem is with this prescription drug? If that was true, why would that keep her from coming to their wedding? Olivia was still confused. At first it was the OxyContin, but then... A muscle worked in his jaw. Then she moved on to using something stronger. Heroin. Olivia couldn't breathe. Her mother was a heroin user? Impossible. Absurd. Ludicrous. She was about to call Greg a liar, but then she remembered her vow to play along. Then she caught a glimpse of the documents on her lap. What does that... She flung her hand outward. Have to do with this? She pointed to the papers. A crooked smile formed on Greg's lips. Your mother was so excited for us to get married, but... When she asked what you wanted her to do for the wedding, you told her the one and only thing you wanted was for her to get clean. Picturing her mother strung out on drugs made Olivia sick. Not that she quite believed Greg's story, but if it was true, it would be heartbreaking. Good thing she had serious doubts about his entire tale. Still, she was on edge waiting to hear what happened next, as if this was a story she was reading about someone else's life, someone else's mother. It took a lot of convincing, but she finally agreed to get help. Hope soared within Olivia. This fictional mother got the help she needed. And then, she asked. Greg shook his head. The day before she was to be admitted to a facility, she nearly overdosed. Olivia's eyes went wide. But she's okay now, right? 
desperate for him to nod and smile. When he just stared at her, it felt as if her heart was plummeting right into her stomach. I don't know. I haven't heard from her in a while. It took everything she had not to grab Greg by the shoulders and shake him. How could he not know where her mother was? How could he leave her out there in a drug-induced stupor? That's when she realized she was falling for his story. Straightening against the cushions, she almost scoffed at him and told him how convenient it was that her mother was out of the picture, unable to help her with her memories. Instead, she calmly turned to him. What happened after she nearly overdosed? She was in the hospital for two days, and then she agreed to be checked into rehab. A soft smile curved his lips. You were so happy, so optimistic. His eyes became tender. Our wedding was scheduled for two months later, and we had every reason to believe she'd be well by then, that she'd be able to come. He pointed to the papers on her lap. Those documents are copies of her paperwork from the rehab facility. She gave them to you at some point. Olivia's gaze slowly traveled to her lap, and when it landed on the top sheet of paper, she couldn't help herself. She read the information there, information which seemed to confirm what Greg was telling her. Swallowing over the huge knot in her throat, Olivia turned to Greg. But she didn't come to our wedding, did she? He shook his head. After three weeks in the program, she checked herself out and she, well, she disappeared. This kept getting worse and worse. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, she left and didn't tell you where she'd gone. He frowned. We hired people to search for her, but they came up empty. To say the least, you were upset. We even considered postponing our wedding, but you were convinced that she would somehow come. So we moved forward with it. If that was true, she wondered, why did the woman in the picture look so happy? He was leaving something out. She was sure of it. Chapter 8 Doubt was written all over Olivia's face. Greg could see it. And who could blame her? Her memories of her mother were completely at odds with what he was telling her. Yet, it was the truth. Then what? Olivia asked, her lips twisted with a mix of skepticism and wariness. The day before our wedding, she called. She said she'd checked herself back into the rehab place and that she was determined to get well this time. You were disappointed she couldn't come to the wedding, but you were ecstatic that she'd turned up and that she'd checked herself in to get help. Olivia's blue eyes were riveted to his, and as he studied her, it was almost as if she knew who he was, almost as if she remembered him. All the good times they'd spent together, all the memories of their love, converged in his mind until he thought his heart would burst with all the love and tenderness he felt for her. He lifted his hand and reached for her face, wanting to brush his fingers against the soft skin of her jaw. But then she blinked and recoiled slightly, enough to stop his hand in mid-air to remind him that things weren't the same between them. Swallowing over the tightness in his throat, Greg pulled his hand away and set it in his lap. You said you haven't heard from her in a while, she said, clearly wanting to get the conversation back on track. Does that mean she didn't complete rehab? Greg paused as he tried to adjust again to his new normal, the normal that would never feel right. No, she did complete rehab that time. He gestured to the papers on her lap, as those documents show. Olivia watched Greg's face, almost regretting the way she'd pulled back when he'd reached for her. But it was much too soon. That, and she couldn't be sure he wasn't just trying to manipulate her. I have to be on my guard, she thought. Forcing her mind back to the story he was spinning, she glanced at the papers before looking at him again. If she completed rehab, why haven't you heard from her? What's going on now? That was two years ago. He said it as if that explained everything. Right, because they'd been married two years, at least according to Greg. But if what he said was true, it made sense that she'd been happy on their wedding day, despite her mother's troubles because she would have been relieved that her mother was getting help. What happened after she got out of rehab? Olivia asked, maintaining the fiction that she believed him. And maybe she even did, a little. She seemed fine, for a while. This was like a nightmare that kept repeating. Go on. She went through rehab again about eight months ago. 
He gestured to the papers and gave her a look that said, see for yourself. Then he shook his head. Guess it didn't take. We haven't heard from her in over two months. Olivia didn't want to hear any more. Besides, it seemed Greg was done telling his tale. He'd sat back in his chair with a tight-lipped frown, his arms on the armrests. After several moments, he leaned forward, placing his forearms on his knees. I'm sorry I had to be the one to tell you about your mother, Olivia. You wanted to know, well, to know the truth. Yes, she did want to know the truth. The question was, was what he'd told her the truth? She had no way to know. Not unless her memory returned. I'm tired, she said as she rested her head against the pillows and closed her eyes. Of course. Greg's tone was resigned and somewhat formal. She heard him get up, then pause while he must have stared down at her. Keeping her eyes closed, she waited until she heard him cross the floor and leave the room. Then she opened her eyes a crack. He was gone, although he'd left the bedroom door open. Her eyes shifted to the tall sliding doors at one end of the room. The sun was setting. Maybe if she had a good night's sleep, maybe then she would wake with her memories magically restored. Not confident that that would actually happen, and with much difficulty, she got ready for bed before settling back under the blankets. Discouraged by all that had happened that day, she tried to get comfortable as the toe of her boot tented the blankets. Stupid boot, she thought. The sheet and blankets were just in the way. Sitting up, she removed the bedding from covering the boot, then lay back and closed her eyes, resigned to the fact that she was not only going to be physically uncomfortable, but that her heart and mind were going to have to deal with their own struggles. After a while, Greg stopped by the bedroom to check on Olivia. To his relief, the door was still open, although he had no doubt he wouldn't be welcome to share the bed with her. That was fine. He would sleep in one of the guest bedrooms, the one closest to the master so he could hear her if she needed his help. He really hoped she would call on him to help her. Standing in the doorway, he thought she was asleep, so he tiptoed into the room, stopping beside the bed. She looked so peaceful, so like the Olivia he loved. Her skin smooth and flawless, her lips wonderfully kissable, her blonde hair fanned out across her pillow. He nearly expected her to open her eyes and smile up at him in recognition, for things to go back to how they had been. Except he didn't want things to go back to exactly how they had been, not if that included her betrayal. Frowning, he studied her lovely face, his heart contracting with a mixture of love and sadness. Determined to get their lives back on track, he vowed that he would do whatever was in his power to help her remember him, to remember the love they shared. Then he remembered the way she'd called out in her sleep, saying, I didn't know, I didn't know. What had that been all about? Did it have anything to do with the man she'd betrayed him with? Could he track the man down? Set up a meeting? Tell him to stay away? And that if he didn't, Greg would... Well, he didn't know what he would do. But he needed to talk to the man. Confront him. Tell him to never contact Olivia again. That it was over between them. Make the man understand that Olivia belonged to him. That he was her husband. Chapter 9 Olivia woke early. She hadn't slept well. Every time she'd wanted to roll over, she'd had to come fully awake so that she could carefully move her ankle. Scrunching up her face as she pushed herself into a sitting position, she shoved aside her frustrations and focused on more pressing matters, specifically trying to regain her memories. When she'd woken, it had only taken a few moments to recall her situation. Struck with amnesia, injured, Married to a man she found extremely attractive, but who, as far as she was concerned, was a complete stranger. It was disconcerting, to say the least. After taking some time to freshen up and get dressed, she climbed back onto the bed. Good morning. Greg's voice boomed as he walked into the room a few minutes later, a sunny smile on his face and a tray of food in his hands. He was trying hard to take care of her. She had to give him that. Good morning she said with much less enthusiasm. He set the tray on the dresser, then stood by her bedside. How'd you sleep? Not wanting to start the day on a bad note, she bit back a frown. Okay, I guess. Good. His smile never wavered. It was kind of getting annoying, how happy he seemed. 
Was it even sincere? Was he always this way, or was he putting on a show? I made you some breakfast. He turned to the tray. A poached egg, fresh fruit, and a glass of orange juice. Was that what she normally ate? She had to admit that it sounded good, and maybe his chipper demeanor wasn't such a bad thing. Tilting her head so that she could more easily see his face, she smiled. Thank you. He glanced toward the back patio that was just outside the sliding door. If you'd like to eat outside, I'll take your tray out for you. That did sound nice, she thought. Yes, she said. I think I'd like that. She looked toward the backyard. The June morning was lovely. Just give me a minute. He nodded, then lifted the tray and strode to the back door. Then, balancing the tray in one large hand, he opened the door. The tranquil sound of birds chirping in the trees flooded in, along with the fresh summer air. Yes, going outside was just what she needed. Did I eat outside often? She wondered, then thought, you know what, it doesn't matter what I used to do. It only matters what I do now. Liking that attitude, she carefully swung her legs over the side of the bed, grabbed her crutches, which were leaning against the wall, and made her way outside. Once she was sitting in a chair, Greg set her food in front of her. Would you mind if I join you? Saying that she wanted to be alone would sound rude, and to her surprise, she actually did want him to join her. No, I wouldn't mind. Tossing her a grin, he turned and walked toward another sliding door, one that led into the family room, which was adjacent to the kitchen. In moments, he returned with another tray. There was so much food it took a moment for him to move it from the tray to the table. Besides a plate stacked high with pancakes, there was another plate with scrambled eggs and bacon and a sizable bowl of fresh fruit. In addition, there was a tall glass of milk. Trying not to gawk at all the food, Olivia took a dainty bite of her poached egg. Hungry today? she asked. He chuckled. Yeah, I guess I am. Not able to contain her thoughts, she asked. Are you really going to eat all of that? He looked incredibly fit. How could he eat that much and still look so good? One of his eyebrows arched. Yes, I am. Then he grinned. Unless you want some, I'd be happy to share. Quickly shaking her head, she replied, No, I have plenty here. He chuckled. That's what I thought. He dug right in, and to her amazement, he didn't seem to be getting full as he ate and ate. When he was about halfway done, he set his fork down and turned to her. Is there anything in particular you'd like to do today? Besides rest, I mean. She'd been thinking about that. What would help her recover her memories? Maybe look at some of the albums, she suggested. Greg's lips turned up in a smile. I have a better idea. You do? Yep. What? He softly laughed. It's a surprise. Not sure she wanted a surprise, she asked. A good surprise or a bad surprise? Crinkling his forehead like that was a silly question, he said. A good surprise. Then he went back to eating. Mollified? Olivia ate what she could, but there was still plenty of food left on her plate. Greg's plates, on the other hand, were empty. Still amazed that he'd been able to put that much food away, she wondered how often he worked out. It had to be frequently. How else could he manage to look so fine and eat so much? Do you work out? She heard herself asking. Then heat raced up her face. Still, she didn't take it back. She was curious. Went for a run while you were getting your beauty sleep, and I'll be working out later as well. His lips tugged upward. We have a home gym, which, I might add, you enjoyed using. She did? Huh. At the mention of working out, it was as if her muscles perked up, like they didn't want her to forget to put them to work. Once your ankle's better, he added, maybe you'll want to get back into it. Yeah, maybe. He was quiet for a moment. If you're done. I can take your plate. Deciding that she needed to say out loud the questions that kept popping into her head, she asked, were you this helpful before? One side of his mouth tilted up. Uh, maybe, maybe not. She laughed. I'm guessing it's more of the maybe not. He laughed along with her. Yeah, but I'm planning on making up for that now. At least he's being honest. 
That thought led her to consider that maybe he was being honest about everything. Her mother, their marriage, everything. The notion flooded her with a sense of peace, like maybe she didn't need to worry about everything quite so much, that maybe she needed to trust him, at least a little. Yes, I'm done. Thank you. With a smile, he picked up her plate. If you meet me in the family room, I'll show you the surprise. Intrigued, she said, okay, I'll be there in a few minutes. Once he disappeared inside, she went back into the bedroom and crutched her way into the bathroom. After brushing her teeth, she checked her reflection in the mirror. For some reason, she wanted to look her best. That is, as good as she could after getting banged up in a car accident. Satisfied that this was as good as she could make it for now, and it wasn't half bad, she made her way into the family room. Greg was doing something with a piece of equipment near the big TV mounted to the wall. Have a seat, he said as he turned to her. You ought to put your foot up on those pillows. Touched that he'd gotten everything ready for her, she sat on the couch and rested her foot on the stack of pillows. With a remote in his hand, he came over to where she sat. Okay if I sit by you? She looked up at him, studied his handsome face, and felt a powerful attraction to him. What was it going to be like when she finally remembered him, when all her memories of him, of their past, were restored? It would be spectacular. She was sure of it. But as sure as she was of that, she was unsure if those memories would return at all. She needed to focus on making new memories. That, at least, was something she could count on. Yes, she said after a brief hesitation. A slow smile curved his mouth, which only made him that much more handsome. With his eyes on her, he settled onto the couch, but he kept several feet between them. Ready for your surprise? Eager to see what it was, she nodded. He smiled, then he pointed the remote at the TV and pressed a button. A video began. A video of their wedding. Olivia caught her breath. This was so much better than mere pictures. Seeing herself with Greg at the altar, taking their vows, kissing as husband and wife, all her doubts vanished. He was her husband. Heart soaring with the undeniable knowledge that he'd told her the truth, she settled in to watch her special day unfold before her. Even as she watched, she could feel Greg looking at her, could actually see him in her peripheral vision watching her. Not caring, she kept her eyes riveted to the TV. Greg could tell that Olivia was entranced, but did any of it look familiar to her? Did the video of them holding hands, taking their vows, embracing, kissing, did any of it stir a memory? A memory of him? She didn't give any indication, so he forced himself to stop studying her and to watch the video instead. He was beyond grateful that he'd had a videographer film their special day. It had actually been Olivia's idea. She'd wanted her mother to be able to enjoy it, even if it was after the fact. Who would have guessed that Olivia herself would need to see the video, the proof of their history, in the hopes that she would remember it? He thought about her comments at breakfast about the amount of food he ate, whether he worked out. At some point, he needed to tell her he played in the NFL, if only to explain their lifestyle. But now, now he only wanted to focus on her. Focus on their lives, their love. The rest could wait. Chapter 10 a phone rang in Greg's pocket. Olivia heard it, and though her attention was trained on the TV, she saw him take it out of his pocket, glance at the screen, then swipe it to stop the ringing before putting it back in his pocket. Do I have a phone? she asked. Greg appeared startled at the question, but after only a moment, his expression smoothed out. Uh, yeah. Maybe the small device would hold some clue to her past, something that would trigger a memory. Where is it? At his hesitation, a hesitation that made her eyebrows pucker, she added, maybe it will, you know, spark a memory. A tight smile pulled at his lips. Sure, right. I'll, uh, I'll get it after the video. That wasn't unreasonable, but she sensed his reluctance and wondered what was behind it. Nodding, she turned her attention back to the video. Why did Olivia want to see her phone? Had she remembered something? Would she tell him if she had? 
Until that moment, it hadn't occurred to Greg that she might hide any of her returning memories. There was only one memory that he knew of that she might want to keep secret. The memory of her betrayal. Had she remembered the man she'd been seeing? The thought made Greg's heart sink. Just the night before, Greg had deleted all of the text messages between Olivia and the man. There hadn't been very many, but he wanted all reminders of her betrayal to disappear. Maybe it was wrong to interfere that way, but he was her husband, and if there was anything he could do to keep that man from resurfacing in Olivia's life, he would do it. It wasn't as if he'd been checking up on her when he'd seen the texts the week before. Rather, she'd left her phone sitting on the counter and her phone had chimed a text while she'd been out of the room. Greg had glanced at the screen and seen a snippet of the message. It had said, I look forward to our meeting, lovely lady. As much as he'd tried, he hadn't been able to forget about it, and eventually, he'd read the entire thread. She'd never added the sender to her contacts, so the message thread had never shown a name, just a phone number. Now, as he sat beside his wife, he thought about the text thread. He couldn't remember precisely what the few texts had said, but the gist of them were setting up times to meet, and talking about how eager Olivia was to see him and how the sender found her so alluring. Just thinking about it made his gut churn. Olivia softly laughed beside him. He cut his eyes toward her, then followed her gaze to the TV. The video was showing Josh Weisner, the Vipers quarterback, offering a toast to the newlyweds. Did she know who Josh was? Or did she just assume he was some random man who was a friend of Greg's? She didn't seem to be making any connections between the fact that Josh played for the Vipers and that he was a close friend of Greg's. At the look of interest on Olivia's face as she watched their wedding video, a sense of hope flooded him. Hope that they would be able to rekindle their love, get a fresh start, put her betrayal behind them. The video ended with Greg leading Olivia into a black limo. That's when we left for our honeymoon, she thought desperately wishing she could remember those important milestones in her life. She refused to let the frustration overwhelm her. How's your ankle? Greg asked. She'd been so focused on the video that she'd forgotten about her broken ankle. It's actually not too bad. A bit achy, but she could deal with that. Good. Can you grab my phone now? His jaw set, but then he nodded. Yeah, sure. Then he stood and left the room. What was up with his reaction? Not sure. It only made her more anxious to get her hands on her phone. Then it occurred to her that maybe Greg was holding something back from her. Something important. She had to find out what it was. Several moments later, he returned with a phone. He held it out to her, but for some reason she just stared at it. Feeling foolish, after all, she was the one who'd asked for it. She forced herself to take it from him. Thanks. Then she immediately set it on the coffee table. Greg sat near her on the couch, his forehead furrowed. Don't you want to look at it? See if there's something there that will help you, you know, remember your past? She couldn't explain it, but the idea of looking at her phone, seeing what was on there, made her anxious. What she needed was a distraction, something to take her mind off of herself. I'll look at it later. A pained expression flashed across Greg's face. Okay. She wanted privacy. He got that. He did. But it made him wonder, again, if she'd remembered something about the other man in her life. He had to stop torturing himself this way. He'd never been able to read her mind, and he never would be able to. As hard as it was, he would have to trust her. There was no other option. Tell me more about you, Olivia said as she readjusted her ankle on the pillows and swiveled her head to look at him. The question seemed kind of absurd. They were married for heaven's sake. Still, Greg knew they had to get to know each other all over again, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It would be like when they'd first met. The idea filled him with renewed hope. He smiled in a self-conscious way. Where to begin? Where are you from? He softly chuckled. I grew up in Los Angeles, went to UCLA. What did you major in? Economics. Her head tilted. So you graduated? Proud of his accomplishments, he nodded. Yeah, with honors. 
and that was on top of his stellar football record, he thought. A look that said she was impressed washed over her face. Nice. She paused a beat. Do you have siblings? I have an older sister, Melanie. She lives in South Carolina with her husband and two kids. Are you close to her? Lifting his shoulders in a shrug, he said, We see each other once a year or so. We're both pretty busy. Is this weird? Me asking questions about things I should know? Yes, he thought. It was definitely weird, but he didn't want her to feel funny about it. Didn't want to discourage her from asking. Nah, it's good you're asking. Who knows what'll trigger a memory, right? Chapter 11 Olivia appreciated his attitude, because it did feel weird to her. She also appreciated how sweet he was. It was no wonder she'd fallen for him, had married him. And a degree in economics? That was impressive. Maybe he was a financial advisor, a very successful one. That would explain their nice digs. But did she contribute? Was she successful too? Wanting to get into more details about their life, she glanced around the large and tastefully decorated space, then faced him again. What do we do for a living? What she really wanted to know was, what did she do for a living? Greg got a funny look on his face like he was proud yet uncertain, all at the same time. Her head tilted. What? I have to admit, it's strange that you don't know this part about me. I mean, I know you don't, and I totally get it, but it's such a huge part of who I am. He chuckled. He wasn't acting like he was a financial advisor. He was acting like he did something bigger. Was he a movie star? He was absolutely hot enough to be one. But if he was, why weren't they living in Los Angeles? Intrigued, Olivia waited to hear what he had to say. Greg sat up straighter, then grinned. I play in the NFL. That was the last thing she would have guessed. Not because he didn't look like he could. Completely the opposite was true. He was tall, ripped, strong. No, she wouldn't have guessed it because, well, because she didn't see herself as someone who would date a jock. An image filled her mind. Really, more of a feeling. She was in high school and her heart had just been broken by the star quarterback. She couldn't recall the details, but she remembered vowing that she would never date a jock again. Yet here she was, married to one. And not just any jock, but a player in the NFL. How had that happened? How had he won her over? It was true that he was really sweet. At least, he had been since she'd woken in the hospital to find him in her room. She had to know more. Much more. The NFL? she asked. Yeah. I'm a wide receiver for the Sacramento Vipers. The name of the team rang a bell. They must have been around long enough for her to have heard of them at some point when she still had her memory. Olivia thought about the huge breakfast Greg had eaten. Now it made sense. She pictured him on the football field making an amazing catch and scoring a touchdown. The image was hot, and a thrill of excitement raced through her. He smiled. You never were all that impressed. That had to have something to do with that vow not to date jocks, she thought. But with him sitting right next to her, his gray eyes trained on her, his giving nature on display, she felt drawn to him. Powerfully drawn to him. Not ready to think about that when it was as if they were on a first date, she recalled how the day before she'd entertained the idea that maybe Greg was trying to trick her and to steal her money. Now, knowing he played in the NFL, she realized that most likely she didn't even have any money. Realized that all they had was probably his money. Embarrassed, her face heated. Needing to make up for the negative, yet ridiculous thoughts she'd had about Greg the day before, she said, That's an amazing accomplishment. His face lit up and she felt better. What about me? she asked. Do I have a job? A career? Anything impressive? She silently added. She remembered always loving animals. Maybe she was a veterinarian. They made good money, right? When I first met you, you were doing some modeling. A model? She was a model? That was kind of cool, but not how she pictured herself. What kind of modeling? She asked. Was she famous? She wondered. 
The idea was interesting, but to her surprise, she found she didn't really care about that. You were in catalogs, wearing the latest clothes, stuff like that. Okay, she could accept that. You said when you first met me. So, what have I been doing recently? For the last year or so, you've spent a lot of time volunteering at the Humane Society. Now that was something she could see herself doing. Wait, she thought. Weren't they wondering where she was? She must have looked slightly panicked because Greg said, Don't worry. I told them you were in a car accident and that you wouldn't be in for a while. Thank you. When you feel up to it, I can take you to see your friends there. Quickly shaking her head, Olivia grimaced. I wouldn't know them. It would be too, well, too awkward. Greg smiled softly. No worries. I understand. He was so sweet. So handsome. So... Olivia could see herself easily falling in love with him. She had to look away. Things suddenly felt too intense. Watching their wedding video, learning that he was a world-class athlete, finding herself so attracted to him. Can I get you anything? Maybe it would be a good idea to put a little distance between them. I'd love a glass of ice water. Greg stood. Coming right up. She watched him go, but as her gaze swept over his athletic body, stopping on his profile as he left the room, her heart fluttered. She hoped he would hurry back. Her phone chimed a notification. Startled, she wondered who would be contacting her. She picked up her phone, her eyes going first to the name of the sender. Mom. It was from her mother. Her mother was all right. Relief surged through her until her eyes slid to the portion of the message that was visible. Then, her heart nearly stopped. It said, You're in danger. Chapter 12 Heart pounding, Olivia swiped her phone. Hardly noticing that using her phone was almost intuitive, her entire focus was on reading the complete message her mother had sent. It said, You're in danger. Be careful who you trust. I love you with all my heart. Olivia stared at the message. What was going on? Why did her mother think she was in danger? Was her mother delusional? If she and Greg hadn't heard from her in months, how would she know Olivia was in danger? But what if her mother wasn't delusional? What if she were completely sane? What if Olivia couldn't trust Greg? Did her mother know about the accident? Did she know Olivia had amnesia? She didn't seem to. Olivia needed to learn more. She needed to talk to her mother. Here you go, Greg said as he walked into the room. Suddenly wary of him, Olivia shoved her phone under her thigh, then took half a second to compose herself before turning to Greg with a smile. Thanks. He handed her the water, then his eyes narrowed. What's going on? Wanting to buy time to come up with an answer, she slowly drank from the glass. Olivia? Greg's voice was soft, concerned, as he sat near her on the couch. Was that an act? Or could he be trusted? Knowing she couldn't ignore his question forever, she took a final swallow of the water before setting the glass on the coffee table. Then, she turned to him. She wanted to tell him about the text from her mother. She really did. But she had to be sure she could trust him. Had to be sure he was really on her side. Forcing a look of innocence, she said, What? He stared at her. Then with a slight frown, he shook his head. Nothing. Glad he hadn't pushed her, she also found herself drawn to him, instinctively wanting to trust him. Maybe if she showed him the text from her mother, he would know what was going on. Then again, he'd flat out told her he hadn't heard from her mother in over two months. Either he was lying, or he had no idea what was going on. And if he didn't know what her mother was talking about, then that had to mean Olivia, the old Olivia, hadn't confided in him. Why wouldn't she have confided in her own husband? Conflicted, she lifted the glass from the coffee table as she surreptitiously watched him. He looked deep in thought. Maybe she could probe him, get an idea what he did or didn't know. She set the glass back down. What are you thinking about? His head jerked so that he was facing her and when their eyes met, his eyebrows tugged together. Then, after a moment, his brow smoothed out. Just wondering if you're remembering anything. Did he have something in mind? 
He certainly seemed to. And it appeared to be something that made him unhappy. What did that have to do with her mother's warning? No, she replied, which was the complete truth. Nothing. A quiet sigh slipped from his nose and Olivia wished she could tell him what he wanted to hear. Greg gestured with his chin toward her leg. What about your phone? He must have seen her shove it under her thigh. What about it? Keeping his focus on her leg, he clenched his jaw. Then he appraised her. Why are you hiding it? The bluntness of his question caught her off guard. I'm not, she started to say. Then she stopped. Did she really want to start this relationship off with lies? No. Greg was her husband. She needed to be honest with him. At least as honest as she could be in light of her mother's warning. A warning that could be completely misplaced. But she had to be sure before she spilled anything. Slowly, she took the phone out from under her leg, although she kept it tightly gripped in her hand and out of Greg's reach. I heard from my mom. Greg's eyebrows shot into his hairline. Really? Then his expression smoothed out. Where is she? Is she okay? His questions seemed sincere. She didn't say where she is, but I guess she's okay. At least okay enough to send a text, she thought. What did she say? Is she going to come see you? Hope and excitement surged through Olivia, making her heart pound. Would that be all right? Greg looked baffled by the question. Of course. In fact, why don't you call her right now and invite her over? Olivia wanted nothing more, but she didn't want to do it in front of Greg. Not until she could get more information about the warning. Still, it would look suspicious if she said no. Yeah, that's a great idea. Half hoping her mother would answer and half hoping she wouldn't, Olivia tapped the phone icon. She found her mother listed in her contacts and tapped her name. Then she pressed the phone to her ear. If she wasn't dependent on her crutches, she would get up and walk in the other room in a casual way, but there was no way she would be able to hold the phone against her ear and crutch her way out of the room. The phone rang on the other end, and rang, and rang. When the voicemail prompt came on, Olivia hesitated, but only for a moment. Hi, Mom. I'd love to see you. Please call me back. Talk to you soon. Bye. She ended the call, then looked at Greg to see his reaction. Astonished that Olivia's mother had contacted Olivia out of the blue, nevertheless, Greg was glad. Mostly. If Caroline had been on another one of her drug binges, if she came over and Olivia saw the shape she was in, it would only make things worse. He only hoped she was sober. Still unsure why Olivia had felt the need to hide her phone when he'd come into the room, Greg couldn't stop himself from thinking that a certain man had contacted her. But she'd denied regaining any memories. If that was true, then some man contacting her wouldn't be a reason to hide her phone. Unhappy with the whole situation, he tried to put his feelings aside and focus on Olivia and helping her recover. Then, her phone rang. Chapter 13 Nearly jumping when her phone rang, Olivia glanced at Greg. He was staring at the phone in her hand. Her gaze followed his and she saw the word, Mom. Biting her lip, she knew she had no choice but to answer. She swiped the screen to answer and pressed the phone to her ear. Hello? Did you get my text? Her mother asked in reply. Sneaking a quick glance at Greg, she smiled, and in a cheerful voice said, Yes, how are you? You're not alone, are you? No. She hoped the volume was low enough that Greg wouldn't be able to hear her mother's words. Is it Greg? Another glance his way. Yes. Greg's forehead was furrowed as he watched her. I know you don't want him to know about, well, about everything. Mom with no idea what was going on, and rather desperate to find out. She cut her mother off. I need to see you. You know that's not a good idea. What? She thought. How could it not be a good idea to see her own mother? Mom, I... I had an accident. A gasp came across the line. What? When? What happened? Are you hurt? Should she tell her about the amnesia? If she wanted her to understand that she had no idea what was going on, she would have to. I broke my ankle, and I... I hurt my head. 
Oh, baby, my baby girl. What happened? I guess I crashed my car. You guess? What do you mean, you guess? I don't remember what happened. I don't remember anything. Do you think it had anything to do with, well, with, you know? Her mother wasn't getting it. What was she talking about? What was going on? Holding back the frustration that was building in her chest, Olivia slowly filled her lungs before exhaling. Mom, I can't remember anything for the last... She glanced at Greg again. Five years or so. Silence on the other end. Then, oh, oh my goodness. How is that possible? Not wanting to get into the science of it, science she didn't understand, Olivia shook her head. I don't know, but that's why I need to see you. Right away. Please. Oh, baby. I want to. I do. But you know I can't. Her mother sighed. No, you don't know. How could you? Frantic to know what in the world was happening, but not about to ask while Greg was sitting right there, Olivia stayed silent, hopeful her mother would explain. You know what? You've done enough. I... I'm going to figure this out myself. Don't you worry, sweetheart. Somehow I'll make this right. I love you, my darling girl. Mom? Silence. Only silence. Her mother had hung up. I love you too, Olivia said in a bright voice. See you soon. Then she pretended to disconnect the already finished call before setting the phone beside her on the couch, on the side furthest from Greg. What did she say? Is she okay? Yeah, sounds like it. When is she coming over? Not wanting to straight up lie, Olivia hedged. She said she'd let me know. His eyes narrowed. Huh. What? I just thought she'd, you know, race right over. After you told her you'd been in an accident. Whatever her mother was involved in must be pretty serious to keep her from coming to Olivia's side when she needed her most. Pretending everything was fine and normal... Olivia shrugged. I'm sure she'll come over as soon as she can. Greg smiled, but it looked forced. Right. He stood. Unless you need anything, I'm gonna... He pointed to the hallway. Get in a workout. Eager for some time alone, Olivia smiled. No, I'll be fine. Go right ahead. You're sure? Yeah. I might doze a bit. All right. He glanced toward the hallway before turning back to her. If you need anything, shoot me a text. She laughed. Okay, I will. A slow smile lifted the corners of his mouth, making him look more attractive than ever. Olivia's breath nearly caught in her throat. Something about that smile. It was familiar. Hope surged through her veins. His gray eyes were steady on her. I'll check on you when I'm done. Though eager to have a chance to speak to her mother in private, she was equally eager for Greg to return. All right. With a final smile, he turned and sauntered out of the room. Olivia watched him go, her gaze sliding over his wide shoulders and muscular biceps before moving down to his narrow waist. A moment later, he was out of view. It was hard to believe he was her husband, but the more time she spent with him, the more she liked the idea. When she was sure he was out of earshot, she picked up her phone and called her mother's number. It went straight to voicemail. Mom, I need to talk to you. I need you to tell me what's happening. What is going on? Please, please call me back. Then she sent her a text. It said, Mom, I need to know what's going on. Please let me know ASAP. By lunchtime, she still hadn't heard back. And when Greg offered to fix something to eat, she accepted, even though the churning worry in her stomach had stolen her appetite. They sat on the back patio and Olivia tried to forget about the mystery surrounding her mother and enjoy the beautiful June day. And enjoy the company of her husband. How was your workout? She asked as Greg set a plate with grilled chicken salad in front of her. Good. You know I love to work up a good sweat. Then his smile faded. I mean, you used to know that. An awkward silence followed as he placed a huge helping of salad on his plate before taking several rolls from a basket. Olivia took a bite of salad. Tender chicken nearly melted in her mouth as tangy dressing exploded on her tongue. She smiled at him. 
Where did you learn to cook so well? This salad is delicious. He grinned, obviously pleased. Glad you like it. He glanced at the food on his plate before meeting her eyes. I really like to eat, so I decided I should learn how to cook. Turns out, I like to cook almost as much as I like to eat. Could he be any more perfect? She thought. Do I like to cook? His lips quirked into a half-smile. Not really, although you enjoy baking. Cookies, mostly. Her gaze fell to her trim hips and stomach. She looked at him with a smirk. Are you making that up in the hopes that I'll start baking cookies? A loud laugh erupted from his mouth. No, you really do like to bake cookies. You just don't eat very many of them. What do I do with them, then? You give them away. Sometimes you take them to the Humane Society, and sometimes you give them to your friends. My friends? She asked. She had zero memory of any friends. Loneliness swept over her. Yeah. He studied her. Maybe I can ask a couple of them to come over. The idea of being with people she had known well but had no memory of made her tense. Still, if it was just one or two people, that might be all right. And maybe seeing them, talking to them, would help unlock her memory. Maybe she'd even confided in them about what was going on with her mother. Okay. Yeah. Greg paused with his fork in his hand. Really? Yeah. Who am I closest to? Even to her, the question sounded absurd. Still, she had to ask because she had no idea. He smiled. That would be Shay. Shay? She turned the name over in her mind, anxious to feel something familiar in the word. But there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. Give yourself time, she thought. She's Josh's girlfriend, Josh Weisner, the Viper's quarterback. He and Shay have been together nearly a year now. You two hit it off from the moment you met. He grinned. Like long-lost sisters or something. That sounded promising. If she had confided in anyone, she would have confided in someone who was like a sister, right? I'm surprised she hasn't contacted me since the accident, she said. Greg's lips pursed. I talked to her right after you were admitted to the hospital and actually updated her yesterday. She knows about your, well, your memory issue. He smiled. She'll be thrilled that you want to see her. He paused. When do you want her to come over? Not even able to picture this person, Olivia had second thoughts, but she knew she needed to get over her discomfort and do this. How about tomorrow? Greg's smile grew. Perfect. I'll set it up. Chapter 14 After struggling through her bath the next morning, not being able to use her right foot and ankle was a challenge she was already tired of, Olivia managed to get dressed and ready for the day. Greg had set up a chair in the bathroom for her to rest her right shin on so that she didn't have to balance on one leg while getting ready. She was so over this broken ankle, but she tried to keep her focus on what she could do. The morning was sunny and warm, and as she made her way to the kitchen, she wasn't surprised to see Greg already there fixing breakfast. I just finished making smoothies, he said with a warm smile. Strawberries, bananas, milk protein powder. I even snuck in some spinach leaves. That smile was worth getting up for. That and his fabulous cooking. Sounds delicious. She grinned. And healthy. He smiled. I aim to please. He lifted two glasses of a green-tinted liquid, then looked toward the backyard. Patio okay? Nodding, Olivia crutched over to the sliding glass door and while balancing on her left foot and her crutches, she slid the door open. You didn't have to do that. Smirking, she said, I'm not completely helpless. He chuckled, then walked through the doorway and out to the patio, set the drinks on a low patio table in front of a couch, then came back to the slider, stopping right beside Olivia. Only a few inches separated them, and with his height, Olivia had to look up to see his face. He was gazing down at her, his gray eyes intense as they captured her full attention. Her breath caught and she found she couldn't move, didn't want to move. With his eyes still locked on hers, he slowly smiled as he reached toward the slider. Let me get that. His voice was low and sexy, and Olivia couldn't take her eyes from his. 
This man who so completely captivated her was her husband. Heart skipping a beat at the thought, she also realized she wasn't ready to let herself be carried away by emotion just yet. In her reality, she'd only known him for a few days. Much too soon to have any kind of real feelings for him, right? Using all of her energy, she tore her gaze away, then made her way to the couch in front of the table where he'd set their smoothies. He sat beside her. That's not all you're going to eat, is it? She asked as she reached for the glass on the table. He laughed. Oh, you think this is the first thing I've eaten today? Her eyebrows rose. It's not? No. Before my run, I had a couple of protein bars. And afterwards, I had a few eggs. Shaking her head with a smile, Olivia lifted the glass to her lips, then took a small sip. Cold and creamy strawberries slid onto her tongue. I don't taste the spinach at all, she said. She studied the liquid in the glass. But the smoothie's green, so I know it's in there. He grinned. That's right. Healthy, yet unobtrusive. A fabulous cook and a world-class athlete, she said. Not to mention sinfully hot, she silently added. Her lips pursed and she asked, What other talents do you possess? Flattered, Greg grinned. Wooing her had been much harder the first time around. Of course, now he had the advantage of being with her all day long. She was kind of a captive audience. That, and the fact that she knew they were already married. Perhaps that was making her more willing to try. Grateful for that, Greg only hoped that when her memory returned, whatever had pulled her away from him and toward that other man would be gone, that he would have overcome it. Then again, he didn't really know what was going on in her mind. For all he knew, she was pretending to enjoy his company. Let's see, he said in answer to her question pushing down the doubts that kept trying to surface. From time to time, I mow the lawn. She laughed. Okay, good. I also have a large repertoire of foods that I grill. Tilting her head, Olivia smiled. Don't you think that would fall under fabulous cook? She did air quotes. I don't know. Grilling's completely different from cooking in the kitchen. Olivia's blue eyes sparkled as she kept her focus on him. His heart did a little flip. The flip it always did when she turned her attention completely on him. He pictured her in the hospital, unconscious, bruised, and battered, remembered how terrified he'd been that she might never wake up. At the memory, his heart crashed into his stomach, and he felt his face nearly crumple. What's wrong? Great. Now he'd ruined the good time they'd been having. Regardless, he decided to be honest. I was thinking about seeing you in the hospital, before you woke up. Her shoulders sagged a little, like she'd put all of that out of her mind until he'd brought it up. I wish I could remember what happened. Time to turn this around. The important thing is that you're okay. I know you've lost your memory, but you'll get it back. You will. She looked dubious, but she smiled. I hope so. Olivia appreciated his optimism regarding her memory. In fact, she appreciated everything about him but she had to operate under the assumption that she would only be making new memories now. Shay should be here anytime. Already? she asked. Half nervous and half excited to meet Shay, Olivia sipped at her smoothie. It'll be fine. She's a very nice person. His comments didn't soothe her. Instead, they annoyed her. How did he know it would be fine? He didn't. It irritated her that he seemed to think stating it would make it true. She was nervous and his comment only seemed to emphasize that. Needing to release the tension she felt, she said, no need to patronize me, Greg. His forehead furrowed like he was offended, and Olivia felt a pinch of regret. Even so, she let her comment hang there. If it made him uncomfortable, all the better, because that was exactly how she felt. I'm sorry. His words made Olivia's pinch of regret turn into full-fledged guilt. No, she said. Greg's head tilted. Olivia frowned. I'm the one who's sorry. None of this is your fault. That may be true, but I don't want you to think I was trying to patronize you, Olivia. I... His lips pressed together and he visibly swallowed. I love you. Her heart seemed to stop beating as a whole kaleidoscope of emotions washed over her. Powerful attraction. Regret at not remembering him or their lives together. Flattery that someone like him loved her. And finally, hope. 
that they could put this all behind them and move forward. Together. Not sure what to say, she cast a soft smile at him, then focused on finishing her smoothie. Moments later, the doorbell sounded. Chapter 15 That must be Shay, Greg said as he stood, clearly waiting for Olivia to go with him to the front door. Olivia's heart began to pound. Shay knew the old Olivia, the Olivia she couldn't remember. What if this new Olivia was completely different? What if Shay didn't like the new Olivia? What if Shay didn't want to have anything to do with her? Suddenly terrified to lose this important connection to her past, Olivia felt frozen, paralyzed. She remained seated. Greg smiled. I'll bring her out to you. Olivia couldn't even muster a nod. Instead, she stared at Greg with wide eyes. Without comment, Greg knelt in front of her, took her hands in his, and gazed at her. At his touch, electricity zinged up her arms and right to her heart. All thoughts of Shay flew from her mind as her complete focus was on the man kneeling in front of her, his gray eyes staring into her very soul. You're an amazing woman, Olivia. His voice was soft, his tone confident. I love you with all my heart. Your friends love you. His eyes shimmered and he visibly swallowed. Be yourself. That's all you need to do. How did he know what she'd been worried about? Did he really know her so well? Maybe he did. He was her husband, after all. Her heart jolted with the unquestionable knowledge that he loved her. Very much. That knowledge gave her the confidence she needed. Thank you, she whispered. He smiled. Then he lifted her hands to his lips and pressed a kiss to the back of one hand. Nearly gasping, she couldn't take her eyes from his face as he met her eyes again. Wait here. All she could do was nod, but she was mesmerized by this man, by her husband. Deeply comforted to know he had her back, her tension began melting away. He stood, and moments later, she heard the front door opening before voices floated out to her. His and a woman's, Shay's. Taking several deep breaths, Olivia braced herself for this meeting. I appreciate you coming, Greg said as he stood in the entry. Then he lowered his voice. Olivia's a bit nervous to, uh, well, to meet you. He hoped the idea wouldn't seem too strange to Shay. Shay smiled warmly. I'm just thrilled she's willing to see me. Greg was too. He thought of the way Olivia had reacted to his declaration of love. He could tell it had affected her. Elated that she was warming up to him, he turned his attention back to Shay. She's on the patio. Do you want me to... Shay shook her head. I know the way. Grateful that Shay was taking the initiative, because what was he supposed to do? Introduce her to Olivia like they'd never met? If you need anything, I'll be in my office. Thanks, Greg. He watched her walk to the patio, his focus sliding to Olivia, whose back was to him. Her booted ankle rested on a stack of pillows. He ached for all that she'd been through, was still going through. If only he could take away her discomfort, her challenges. But he couldn't. Clenching his jaw, he felt his heart contract with love for his wife. Everything would work out. Everything would be okay. It had to be. With a final look in her direction, he turned and walked toward his office. Olivia heard light footsteps approaching. Turning her head, she saw a slender woman with long, dark hair step onto the patio. She'd been hoping that she would recognize Shay. But when she saw her, it was as if a complete stranger was joining her. Olivia's shoulders started to sag. Then she thought, nope, I'm not going to let this get me down. I'll get to know her and we can become friends. I can do this. Holding a beautiful bouquet of flowers, Shay said, Good morning, Olivia. She spoke as if they were old friends. Jolted to realize they were old friends, that to Shay nothing had changed, Olivia held back a frown. Hello? Mind if I join you? Olivia gestured to one of the chairs next to the couch. Please. Shay sat down, and when she smiled, Olivia noticed her dimples. Something about her smile calmed Olivia, made Shay seem more approachable. Shay held up the bouquet. I brought these for you. Then she set them on the table. They're gorgeous. Thank you. Then, 
Wanting to get any awkwardness out of the way, Olivia said, Can I be honest? Shay nodded. Of course. I don't remember you, but... Unexpected tears choked her. I want to get to know you. Olivia's chin wobbled. To her surprise, Shay leapt from her seat, rushed over to Olivia's side, and threw her arms around her. Oh, Olivia, I'm so sorry about all that's happened to you. Then she pulled back and smiled through tear-filled eyes. I'll do anything I can to help you. You can count on me. Deeply touched by Shay's sincerity, Olivia felt the tears that had filled her eyes begin to overflow her lashes. Thank you. Now tell me how you're feeling. Shay's voice was calm and matter-of-fact. She tilted her head down as she stared into Olivia's eyes. How you're really feeling. When Olivia hesitated, Shay added, Just between us. A sense of peace swept over Olivia, and somehow she knew she could trust Shay. Relieved beyond measure to have an ally, someone besides Greg, because even though she believed he was on her side, the way she felt about him was still complicated. Olivia softly sighed. Thank you. Shay leaned against the couch cushions, then glanced at Olivia's ankle before meeting her gaze. How's the ankle? Glad she was starting with something simple, Olivia half-smiled. It could be worse. I don't need surgery, so that's a big relief. And it really doesn't hurt. It's just really hard not to be able to walk on it. Grimacing, Olivia added, Evidently, it's going to take about ten weeks before I can get rid of this boot, although I'll be able to start putting weight on it in about six weeks. Ugh, I'm sorry to hear that, so no driving, obviously. Right. Shay grinned. That just means I'll be coming to get you to take you to lunch and anywhere else you want to go. Gratitude to this woman, who obviously cared about her, flooded her. I'm sure I'll take you up on that. I should hope so. Going to lunch is one of our favorite activities. She winked. That, and shopping, at least when we have time. That piqued Olivia's curiosity. What do you like to do, Shay? Shay straightened. I'm glad you asked. My passion is gardening. Olivia's gaze went to the flowers on the table before she faced Shay again. Did you put that arrangement together? A bright smile lit Shay's face. Yes, and the flowers are from my garden. Impressed, Olivia said, that's quite a talent. How long have you been into gardening? Shay narrowed her eyes. We're supposed to be talking about you. Then she chuckled. But that's how you are, Olivia. Always focusing on others. One of the things I love about you, my friend. That's when Olivia realized that she felt completely comfortable with Shay, as if she'd known her for years. Relaxing into the cushions, Olivia smiled. What's going on with this amnesia? Shay asked, her tone showing she wasn't put off by it or shocked, but simply curious. The way she asked, like it was a temporary thing, made Olivia reflect on it a little more. It's the strangest thing, Shay. I can remember things from maybe five years ago, but nothing since then. Shay glanced toward the house. Not even Greg? Shaking her head, Olivia grimaced. No, it's like I just met him three days ago. A slow smile curved Shay's mouth. And? What do you think of him? For a moment, Olivia felt like a teenager who just found out that the high school jock had a crush on her. He's... She bit her lip to try to stop the smile from blossoming on her mouth. He's pretty amazing. Shay laughed. He is. Almost as amazing as my Josh. Olivia grinned. Hmm, I'd have to meet your Josh, but I'm pretty sure Greg's more amazing. Shay smiled, then asked, So you don't remember anything about your accident? Nope, not a thing. That's too bad. The text message from her mother flashed in her mind and she remembered she was going to see if Shay knew anything about what was going on. Did I ever talk to you about, well, about my mother? Sometimes. Hope flared inside Olivia. What did I tell you about her? A look of uncertainty crossed Shay's face. Don't worry, Olivia said. Greg told me about her drug issues. Shay nodded. Okay, good. I didn't want to be the one to tell you. With a glance toward the house, Olivia said, Greg said we hadn't heard from my mother in, like, two months. But I talked to her briefly yesterday, and it sounded like I'd been in touch with her more recently than that. Olivia's hopes hinged on her next question. 
Did I confide in you about, well, about anything to do with my mother recently? Shay looked thoughtful. Not in so many words, but you did tell me one thing. Hope surged through Olivia. Maybe Shay held the key that would unlock the mystery surrounding her mother. What did I tell you? Chapter 16 Shay leaned forward and rested her forearms on her thighs, her gaze steady, like she was glad to be able to do something to help solve the puzzle surrounding Olivia's mother. You said you were helping your mother, that this had to be the last time, that you didn't want to tell Greg because he'd already done so much. She paused a beat. You said you were embarrassed to ask for his help and that you were going to handle it yourself. What was I doing to help her? Did I tell you? Frowning, Shay shook her head. I asked, but you refused to give me the details. Pressing her lips together as she sighed through her nose, Olivia reached for her phone. I need to try to call my mother again. She's not returning my calls or texts, and I'm so... She pursed her lips as she tapped the call button beside her mother's name. Then she held the phone to her ear. Meeting Shay's eyes, she said, this is beyond frustrating. Whether she meant not remembering or not being able to get a hold of her mother, she didn't know. It was all frustrating. Seconds later, the call went to voicemail. Mom, please call me right away, please. Then she disconnected the call and set the phone on the table. Can I get you ladies anything? Greg asked from the doorway a few moments later. Olivia's heart thumped with longing at the sight of him. Something cold to drink would be wonderful, she said. His gaze settled on her and her pulse skyrocketed. Coming right up. When he disappeared from view, Olivia turned to Shay, who was grinning at her. What? Shay's smile only grew. I just think it's adorable the way you guys are with each other. Was her attraction to Greg so transparent? What do you mean? The man's obviously head over heels for you. Less than an hour before, Greg had told her he loved her, but hearing that it was so obvious to others thrilled Olivia. I told you he was amazing, Olivia said. And you, Shay said as if Olivia hadn't spoken. Me? Shay's eyes seemed to twinkle. Yes, you're clearly becoming smitten with him. It was true, she was. Despite her mind having no memory of him, her heart was a different story. Because it seemed the more time she spent with him, the more her heart was tugging her into his orbit. When Greg brought out tall glasses of ice-cold lemonade, Olivia tried to be subtle as she watched him. He handed each of them a glass, his eyes lingering on Olivia. Knowing how he felt about her, she blossomed under his gaze. There you go. His attention was focused solely on her. Is there anything else you need? Her pulse racing, she shook her head. No, I think we're fine. He smiled at her, his gray eyes warm. Okay, I'll check on you in a while. Then he turned and walked away. When he was gone, Shay said, He is pretty amazing, Olivia. Needing to cool down, Olivia turned to Shay. How did you and Josh meet? Chuckling, Shay shook her head before taking a sip of her lemonade. Then she set it on the table. Now there's a story for you. A story Olivia was sure she already knew. At least the old Olivia had known it. I'd love to hear it. She rolled her eyes. Again. A bright smile tugged at the corners of Shay's mouth. That's one story I never tire of telling. She settled against the cushions. I'd left my boyfriend and gotten a ride from a stranger. Well, the guy dumped me off in the middle of nowhere. I was kind of desperate for some water and I came across this cabin. No one was home, so I let myself in. Her lips twisted into a smirk. Okay, maybe I broke in. Turns out the place belonged to the great Josh Wisner, superstar quarterback for the Sacramento Vipers. Needless to say, he wasn't too happy to find me there. She laughed. Funny thing is, I had no idea who he was. Olivia listened as Shay described how she and Josh had fallen in love, enthralled by the tale. And now I can't imagine my life without him. Josh does sound like a great guy. He really is. I love him so much. Touched by the emotion in Shay's voice, Olivia only hoped she would feel that way toward Greg one day. Then she realized that she was already on her way to that destination— they visited a while longer before Shay gave her a hug goodbye with the promise that she would come back in a few days. Shay also elicited a promise from Olivia that she would call if she wanted to get out for a while. Thank you so much for coming, Olivia said, meaning it. 
She was so pleased that she'd pushed herself to meet with Shay despite her reservations. Like anyone could keep me away, Shay said with a grin. You take care of yourself. I'll make sure she takes it easy, Greg said as he stepped onto the patio. Olivia's heart did a little flip at the sight of him. Good. Shay turned back to Olivia. Talk to you soon. Olivia smiled, definitely. As Greg walked Shay to the door, Olivia closed her eyes and leaned her head against the cushion. A few minutes later, she heard his footsteps approach, and she opened her eyes and sat up straight. I'm guessing your visit went well. He sat in the same spot Shay had occupied, next to Olivia on the couch. It went really well. Thank you for setting it up. No problem. He paused. Did it, that is, did you remember anything? Softly sighing, Olivia shook her head. No. He smiled in a way that said it didn't matter. You look beautiful. Caught off guard by his sweet words when she'd half expected him to make a comment about her lack of memory, she had the urge to scoot closer to him. Her foot resting on the pillows would make it too much of a production, so she settled for smiling. Thank you. Then she tilted her head. How do you always know just the right thing to say? He laughed. Oh, I don't. Believe me. Then he grinned. But I'm glad I've been getting it right lately. He paused. I'm going to fix a snack. Can I get you anything? No, I'm fine. All right. He stood and walked into the house. Olivia watched him go, her heart swelling with the powerful attraction she felt toward him. Moments later, her phone chimed a text. Hopeful that it was her mother finally getting back to her, she picked up her phone and glanced at the screen. Rather than the name Mom listed on the notification, it showed a phone number. She saw a snippet of the message, which said, We have a problem. Maybe her mother was using someone else's phone. Eager to see what her mother had to say, Olivia swiped the screen to unlock it and tapped on the message icon. The full message appeared. We have a problem. We had an agreement, but you lied to me. That is unacceptable. Alarmed, Olivia tightened her grip on the phone. What agreement? Who had sent the message? What had she lied about? What was going on? Did this have something to do with her mother and the secrets she was keeping? Knowing it had to, Olivia was more desperate than ever to speak to her mother. Once again, she dialed her mother's phone, and once again it went straight to voicemail. Mom, you have to call me. I just got a strange text and I... I need to know what's going on. She sighed. Call me, please. Discouraged, Olivia dropped her phone on her lap. Are you sure you don't want some of this? Greg asked when he stepped onto the patio a short time later, a large fruit salad in one hand and a pair of plates in the other. Appetite gone, Olivia shook her head. For half a second, Olivia had forgotten about the text. Seeing Greg always seemed to distract her from her problems. Maybe I should tell him about it, she thought. Tell him what my mother said. Maybe he can help. He settled on the couch beside her, setting the fruit salad on the table before parceling out a large portion onto one of the plates. She didn't know him well, but what she'd seen of him, she liked. A lot. And she had no reason to distrust him. He'd been nothing but kind to her. Kind and sweet. She had to take a chance. Had to tell him what little she knew. Chapter 17 Something had happened. Greg could see it in the way Olivia sat on the couch. She'd been so relaxed when Shay had left, so at ease. Now, though, her body was rigid, her mouth set, her eyes tight. Not sure if he should come right out and ask or give her a chance to tell him, he ate several forkfuls of fruit. I have to tell you something, she said as he pierced a chunk of cantaloupe with his fork. Thrilled that he hadn't had to ask, when he considered what she might be about to say, his heart began to pound. What if the man she'd been seeing had contacted her? What if she remembered him, wanted to be with him, had chosen him over Greg? The thought made his gut churn. Forcing himself to not betray his emotions, he set his fork down and turned to her, giving her his full attention. What's up? Struck by the way his tone completely belied the emotions roiling inside him, he only hoped his calm demeanor would encourage Olivia to be completely truthful. Something's going on. 
The vagueness of her statement only made the churning in his stomach morph into a battering sensation that sent waves of nausea climbing his throat. This was it. This was where she told him that she was in love with someone else. He had to swallow over the knot in his throat. What's going on? What do you mean? I don't know. That's the problem. Shaking his head slightly, Greg narrowed his eyes. I don't understand. Was this her way of breaking it easy? Of claiming this was all out of the blue? That she was the innocent victim? I think it has something to do with, well, with my mother. Your mother? So whatever she was talking about was completely unrelated to her betrayal, and it was tied to her mother. Again, that was just what they needed. They'd helped her mother too many times to count. Not that he resented it. They had plenty of money, and if helping her mother made Olivia happy, Greg was all too willing to do whatever she asked. But even he had his limits. And now was not the time to stop their lives to help her mother deal with her addiction. They had enough on their plate. Holding back the sigh that wanted to come out, he asked, What about her? Yesterday I got a... a weird text from her. It said that I was in danger. Greg's eyes widened. In danger? From who? Olivia shook her head. I don't know. She didn't say. She just said I should be careful who I trust. Did that mean she didn't trust him? Clearly it did, or she would have told him about the message the day before. Then he remembered the way she'd hid her phone under her leg. When he'd called her on it, she'd admitted hearing from her mother. But she hadn't told him what her mother had really said. But she's telling me now, he thought. That counts for something, right? His hurt feelings weren't important. What was important was the fact that Olivia could be in danger. You need to call her, find out more. She shook her head. I've already left several messages. Wait. Yesterday you talked to her on the phone. What did she say then? Olivia bit her lip like she was trying to remember. Basically that she was going to figure it out herself. She looked at him, her eyes broadcasting worry. Whatever it is. A powerful urge to draw her into his arms swept over him. The need to crowd out the world and focus on her. To protect her from everything. But he held back. Though he loved her with all his heart, she didn't feel the same toward him. How could she when she had no memory of him? The thought pained him, but he knew it was true. He focused on the issue in front of them. Why are you telling me this now? She picked up her phone and held it out to him. Because a few minutes ago I got a different text, and I don't know who sent it. Greg's heart began to hammer. It had to be from him. Not wanting to read what the man had said to his wife, Greg forced himself to take the phone from Olivia swiped the screen, then pulled up her messages. Without even trying to, he'd memorized the number the other texts had come from, the texts that he'd deleted, the texts that showed she'd betrayed him. Now, as he looked at the number this new text had come from, he wasn't at all surprised that it was the same number. The exact same number. It was from him. Disappointment rocketed through him. He'd hoped the amnesia would give them a fresh start. He should have known better. If this other man was in love with Olivia, then the man wouldn't give up easily. What do you think it means? Greg dragged his focus away from the phone number and read the message. It said, We have a problem. We had an agreement, but you lied to me. That is unacceptable. What agreement had she made with him? What had she allegedly lied about? Wait. Was this man, this scumbag, threatening his wife? That's what was unacceptable. Nostrils flaring, Greg lifted his eyes to Olivia's. He needed her to remember what she'd done. Her blue eyes shone with confusion and her brow furrowed with worry. Clearly, she had no idea what this was about. No recollection of her betrayal. Maybe it was time for him to enlighten her. Chapter 18 Greg looked angry. Olivia didn't know him well, but even she could see that his body had tensed, his lips had flattened, and his jaw had clenched. What was going on? Did he know who had sent the text? Did he know more than he was letting on? What? she asked, desperate to have him fill in the blanks. Tell me, please. This Greg, angry Greg, 
was so different from the man she'd gotten to know over the last few days. Was this who he really was? Was the Greg she'd been falling for just an illusion? The idea saddened her. Then again, she had a hard time seeing herself marrying him if he was really an angry person. Maybe there was another reason behind his change in attitude. There's something you should know. His voice was soft, but intense. What? When he stared at her in silence, she added, Does it have to do with my mother? He barked a laugh and shook his head. No. What then? Audibly exhaling, he stared at her a moment longer before looking toward the lake spread out below them. Whatever it was, he was obviously reluctant to tell her. That could only mean it was bad. Really, really bad. Maybe she didn't want to know. But she had to. Had to understand what the heck was going on. Had to remember. What? Her tone was sharp. Would you just tell me? I can't stand this. His head swiveled in her direction and he glared at her. You were cheating on me. Recoiling at the poisonous words, Olivia felt her heart drop into her stomach. She wasn't a cheater. She'd always considered herself to be loyal, fiercely loyal. She was disgusted by the idea that she would cheat on her husband, on him. From all appearances, he was a good man. Why would she have risked throwing away her relationship with him? Now she understood why he was angry. Still, she found it hard to believe. Was he making it up? Telling her this lie for some unknown reason? By the look on his face, he believed what he was saying. But it couldn't be true. Then she remembered how she disbelieved his declaration that her mother had a drug problem. Then he'd proven it to her. At least, his proof had seemed to be legit. Prove it, she demanded. A muscle worked in his jaw and his lips pursed. I can't. There, she thought. So it wasn't true at all. Triumph burst through her. Greg held up her phone. This is the same person who's been texting you. He shook the phone. This is who you've been cheating on me with. Hating the idea that she really had cheated on him, a new thought occurred to her. What do you mean this person's been texting me? There's only one message. The message I just got. Where are the other messages? A look of defeat swept over Greg's face, and he set the phone on the cushion between them. I deleted them. Why would he do that? Then she knew. He wanted to keep the information from her. Didn't want her to remember. What else was he holding back? What else did he not want her to know? Distrust flooded the space between them. Regardless... She needed to know more. What did the text say? The ones you deleted? He frowned. Mostly where and when you were meeting. His voice was resigned. Mostly? What else was there? His frown deepened. Things like, I look forward to our meeting, lovely lady. His jaw tightened. Does that ring a bell? It didn't, she thought. Not at all, but it obviously upset Greg. Who could blame him? If she were to find messages like that on his phone from some mystery woman, she would be livid and hurt. So very, very hurt. Had she actually cheated on him? Guilt lanced through her, sharp and deep. If it was true, she deserved whatever horrible things had happened to her. Had she been coming back from a rendezvous when she'd crashed? If so, it was karma. I'm so sorry, Greg. She whispered as tears sprang into her eyes. So, she was admitting it. At last. It didn't make him feel any better, but the dull ache in his heart that had been a constant companion since he'd discovered her betrayal lessened. I don't... She shook her head as tears slid down her cheeks. I don't remember anything. But if it's true, I don't deserve you. Staring at her lap, she wiped at her tears. I should... I should go. Alarmed at her statement, Greg second-guessed his decision to tell her. Where would you go? Her shoulders seemed to fold inward and she refused to meet his eyes. I don't know. I'll figure something out. There was no way he would let her leave. Not when she couldn't take care of herself. Not when she couldn't remember anything about her life. I don't want you to leave. And that was the biggest truth of all. 
He loved her so deeply, so fully, he would do anything for her. Anything. Lifting her head, she finally met his gaze. Her cornflower blue eyes were bright with tears. You don't? At that moment, all he wanted was to wrap her in his arms and hold her against him, to tell her that everything would be okay. Then he remembered the text she'd just received. This man, this interloper, had sounded vaguely threatening. He needed to deal with this guy, let him know he couldn't push Olivia around, that it was time for him to disappear from their lives. Greg wanted his feelings to be crystal clear. Of course I don't want you to leave. I love you, Olivia. I have since the day I met you, and I always will. Fresh tears filled her eyes, but this time they were accompanied by a smile. Are you sure? A wry smile pulled up the corners of his lips. Sure that I love you, or sure that I don't want you to leave? She shrugged. Both? His smile grew. Yes, I'm sure. Of both of those things. He was so good. She really didn't deserve him. Why was he giving her a second chance? Did he really love her that much? How did she get so lucky? Now it was her turn to do whatever she could to make this work. She glanced at her phone on the cushion beside her before looking at Greg. What should I do about this person? Greg looked toward the lake, then faced Olivia, a pained expression on his face. First... We need to know exactly what agreement you had with him. Olivia was curious about that, too. She just hoped that when they found out what it was, she wouldn't be too ashamed. Chapter 19 What should I say to him? Greg looked at her tear-stained cheeks and felt like a jerk for being the cause of them. Well, maybe it wasn't actually his fault. He was just the messenger, after all. The one to tell her what she'd done. Nevertheless, he hated seeing her in any kind of distress. Wishing he could make this all go away, he frowned. Why don't you let me handle it? Then he could make sure this was taken care of. His way. Olivia immediately handed him her phone. That would be great. Thank you. Thrilled that she really did want him to deal with this, that she hadn't been playing him, he paused before he began typing a reply to the sender. He wrote, I've changed my mind. The agreement is off. He showed Olivia the message, and after she nodded, he pressed send. Within minutes, they received a reply. It said, doesn't work like that, beautiful. Annoyed that this man hadn't gotten the message, and also irritated that he was calling Olivia beautiful. Yes, she was beautiful, but that was only something he should be saying. Greg tapped out a response. He wrote, you're not hearing me. I'm no longer interested. Do not contact me again or there will be consequences. He knew the message sounded nothing like Olivia, but he didn't care. He wanted this guy out of their lives, for good. After getting Olivia's approval, he pressed send. This time they received a reply in less than a minute. It said, looks like you didn't hear me, but if that's how you want to play it. Did that mean the guy understood things were over between him and Olivia? Greg hoped so. Although the way he ended his text, like he was keeping it open-ended, made Greg wonder. Though Olivia was glad Greg was handling this horrible situation, she had an uneasy feeling about the whole thing. The way the man responded didn't sound like a man who was in love. It sounded more like a business arrangement. Despite her concerns, she was eager to put this whole mess in their past. Are you going to send him a reply? Greg shook his head. No. We're done here. As much as Olivia wanted to believe that, she got the feeling that this wouldn't be the last they would hear from the man. Still, she didn't know what else to do, so she nodded and hoped he was right. Okay? After that, she tried to put all of the troubles she couldn't control, which were basically all of them, out of her mind. Greg made a delicious lunch, and when he left her on her own so he could work out, Olivia went into her bedroom and stretched out on the bed before trying to call her mother again. And again, it went straight to voicemail. Exasperated by her mother's lack of communication, Olivia breathed slow and deep until a sense of calm settled over her. Then she drifted off to sleep. She was in the back seat of an SUV with tan leather seats and a plush interior. Cool air from the air conditioner drifted over her, 
A man sat beside her, a man with hard eyes and a cruel smile. All will be forgiven if you keep up your end of our agreement, he said. Then his eyes narrowed. Do not cross me, or you will regret it. Her heart thumped against her ribs. I won't cross you, I promise. Lips twisting into a smile, he placed his hand on her knee and squeezed. No need to make promises, beautiful lady. I know who you are, and I know where you live. Biting her lip to keep from crying out in fear and pain, Olivia remained silent. His grip on her knee tightened. Remember, no cops. Desperate to get away from him, Olivia nodded. The man's lips stretched into a grin as he released her knee. Until we meet again. Wanting nothing more than to be away from him, she reached for the door. Wait. The one-word command stopped her cold, and she turned to look at him. His eyes glinted with malice. I don't give second chances. Then he waved the back of his hand toward the door, dismissing her. Without a backward glance, she flung the door open and leapt from the SUV. The black car roared away. Olivia woke in a cold sweat, the dream playing over and over in her mind, her chest tight with terror. As a child, she'd had nightmares from time to time and her mother had always told her to rewrite the endings to make them happy dreams instead of nightmares. It was a skill she tried to use now, but each time she tried, the feeling of despair only increased. That's when she knew. It wasn't a dream. It was a memory. For a moment, she was elated. She had remembered something. Something recent. But then the memory itself crashed over her and a new one was added. The man, she couldn't recall his name, had told her he would text her with the details of when and where to meet. That's when it hit her. He was the one who'd sent the text earlier. He was the one she had an agreement with. He was the one who'd said she'd lied, and that that was unacceptable. And that's when she knew her mother was right. She was in danger. Chapter 20 Olivia knew she had to tell Greg, had to let him know he had it all wrong. This wasn't about cheating. It was about something else entirely. Something frightening. Something that put them both in danger. With still no idea what the agreement was, all she knew was that they had to get away, to hide, to make sure the man couldn't find them. He was bad news. The worst kind. The feeling of evil that filled her heart at the thought of him made her cringe, and she was tempted to burrow under the covers and close her eyes in denial. But she couldn't. She had to face whatever was happening. She had to warn Greg. A spark of an idea lit her mind. Maybe there was some way to get out of this, some way to convince the man that she would follow through on whatever it was she'd agreed to, some way to protect herself and Greg. Maybe if she explained, told him that she couldn't remember that she'd had an accident. Maybe then he would give her a second chance. A sliver of hope pierced her as she picked up her phone and tapped the screen to bring up her messages. She reread the thread from that day. We have a problem. We had an agreement, but you lied to me. That is unacceptable. And then Greg's reply. I've changed my mind. The agreement is off. And the man's response. Doesn't work like that, beautiful. Then Greg's last text. You're not hearing me. I'm no longer interested. Do not contact me again or there will be consequences. And then the man's final reply. Looks like you didn't hear me, but if that's how you want to play it. Olivia had no doubt that the man had no intention of letting her off the hook. She had to convince him that there was no reason to harm her. With shaking hands, she tapped out a message. She typed, Please, let me explain. I had an accident and I've lost my memory. I don't remember what agreement we made. Please tell me and I'll honor it. With trembling fingers, she pressed send. Then she waited for his reply. Within ten minutes, her phone chimed a notification. Anxious, Olivia snatched the phone from her lap and read the message. It said, I don't give second chances. Fear rippled through her chest. Those were the exact words he'd said to her when she'd met with him in the dream memory. Desperate for him to believe her, to understand that she would do whatever it took to end this, she tapped a reply. 
I'm begging you to believe me. Just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. He responded within moments. You didn't seem so eager to follow through earlier today. She wrote, That wasn't me. Someone else sent that message. He replied, Who else knows about our agreement? She wrote, I told you. I don't remember anything. He answered, Who sent that text? Olivia hesitated before responding. If she admitted it was Greg, would that put him in danger too? Or was he already in danger? Finally, she typed, It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that it wasn't me. After it was sent, I remembered our meeting. That's why I'm asking you to give me a chance to make this right. She tapped send and prayed that this man, who just the thought of, sent her heart racing, would show her mercy. When 15 minutes had passed and the man still hadn't replied, Olivia's nerves stretched tighter and tighter. Was he ignoring her on purpose to send a message that he wasn't going to listen to her plea? Or was he thinking about it? Or maybe something had happened to him in the last few minutes and everything would be all right. Admitting that her last idea was a ridiculous hope, she knew it was time to tell Greg what was going on. Sliding her booted right leg over the side of the bed, she sat up on the edge before grabbing her crutches. Then she slowly, laboriously, made her way down the hall toward their home gym. If this was the fastest she could go, she would never be able to outrun danger. Despair slammed into her and she stopped to catch her breath. The palms of her hands were sore from using the crutches and her left leg was tired from supporting all her weight. This was all too much. The agreement, the danger, the accident. Then again, everything that was happening was her own fault. From all appearances, she'd made a deal with the devil. For what reason, she could only fathom a guess. And that guess said this had something to do with her mother. Regardless, there was no reason Greg should have to suffer for her stupid choice. No reason for him to be in danger, too. Maybe she could make Greg leave so that he would be safe. She could stay there and face the consequences of whatever she'd done, face the results of whatever deal she'd made. Feeling miserable and kind of freaked out, she straightened and crutched the rest of the way to their home gym. As she approached, she could hear the sound of a football game, mixed with the clanking of weights. Just outside the door, she took a moment to gather herself. What would Greg say when she tried to convince him to leave? How would she convince him? Would he do it? Would he leave? With fear and worry clouding her mind, she stepped across the threshold to face her husband. And there he was. His focus on the large TV mounted to a wall, his back to her. Pausing to watch him as he worked his impressive biceps, Olivia's heart seemed to reach out to him in a memory that her mind was struggling to recall. But even though she couldn't remember their relationship before she'd woken in the hospital three days earlier, she couldn't deny that deep down she knew him and loved him, enough to sacrifice herself for him. Her gaze moved from him to the football game on the TV, and that's when she saw the name Sinclair printed across the jersey of a player who was racing down the field. The player turned as his entire body reached toward the football that was rocketing through the air. The ball seemed to float right into the player's outstretched hands before he tucked the ball against his chest and turned to run, sprinting toward the end zone. It was Greg, and he was magnificent. Olivia's heart soared as she watched him on the field. Then a player from the opposing team slammed into him, stripping the ball from his hands. Several players catapulted toward the loose ball, including Greg. A referee called the ball for the opposing team. Olivia's eyes slid to Greg, who had stopped his workout to stare at the screen. With a remote in his hand, he rewound the game to the spot where he'd tucked the ball into his chest. Then he moved the recording forward frame by frame, pausing on the moment when he'd lost the ball. Her gaze slid over his athletic body and she almost forgot the reason she'd come to see him. A split second later, she remembered why, and when she pictured that man punishing Greg for her mistakes, her heart nearly stopped beating before it went into a panicked gallop. Needing to calm down before she spoke to him, because there was no way he would leave if he sensed something was wrong, she took a few deep breaths, then said, watching it over and over won't change the outcome. She tried to put a lilt in her voice, like she didn't have a care in the world, but she didn't quite pull it off.
Greg spun around at the sound of Olivia's voice. Seeing her there brightened his mood. How long have you been standing there? She smiled in that way that always made his heart contract with love. Long enough to see that you enjoy watching yourself play football. He laughed. I wouldn't call it enjoyment. Pointing to the TV with the remote, he said, in case you didn't see, I lost the ball in that play and caused a turnover. He frowned. That cost us the game. She came closer, and the sound of her crutches hitting the concrete floor echoed into the room. You can't blame yourself for losing the game. There are other players. That may be true, but if I'd held on to the ball, the other team wouldn't have had time to take the ball downfield and score a field goal that put them over the top. He didn't want to talk about that particular play anymore. What brings you to our gym? He smiled as he looked at the boot on her right leg before lifting his eyes to hers. I don't think you're quite ready for a workout. She laughed. No, I'm definitely not, but... Her lips tugged upward. What? I was wondering... Her smile wavered, and Greg could tell something was on her mind, something upsetting. He set the remote down and crossed the room until he was standing right in front of her. What's wrong? Her smile collapsed as tears filled her eyes. We have to leave, right away. Alarm rattled through him. What are you talking about? She stared at the floor, and when her shoulders began to shake, Greg couldn't stop himself. Closing the gap between them, he wrapped his arms around her and tugged her against his chest. Her body went rigid, but then she relaxed into his embrace. It felt so good to hold her, so right, that he almost forgot what she'd said. Almost. Chapter 21 the strength Greg exuded as he held her in his arms sent calm cascading over Olivia. When he'd first put his arms around her, it had been unexpected, and she'd almost pushed him away. But it had only taken a moment for it to feel familiar. And right. What's going on, Olivia? He asked against her hair. Tell me. Defeat burned inside her. She'd meant to get him to leave, to protect him, but she hadn't even been able to manage so much as suggesting he leave without breaking down completely. Now she had no choice. She had to tell him the truth. Maybe that wasn't all bad, though. He would help her. She had no doubt. Although how he could possibly help was still a mystery, since neither one of them had a clue what deal she'd made with the man who'd sent the text. Not that it mattered now. The man had been clear when he'd said he didn't give second chances. So, now what? Greg released her, and she immediately missed the feel of his body warming hers. His finger went under her chin, forcing her to meet his gaze. His eyes bored into hers. Why do we need to leave? His tone was soft, yet firm. Exhaling a shaky breath, she looked for a place to sit and saw a bench nestled under a window. Let's sit down. He took a step back. Of course. Olivia led the way, and once they were seated side by side... She reached into her back pocket and took her phone out, but held it between her hands. I remembered something. Greg's eyebrows shot up. While I was sleeping, I had a dream. But when I woke up, I realized it wasn't a dream at all. It was a memory. Then she described what she'd remembered. The man in the SUV. Her terror. His statement that he didn't give second chances. Greg's forehead furrowed. You're sure that really happened? I have no doubt. How can you be so certain? That text I got earlier? Pain slid through his eyes. Yeah? This was the only bit of good news tied to what she had to tell him. Greg, I wasn't cheating on you. This person who was texting me, he's the one I met with. She paused, her stomach clenching with fear. He scares me. It hit Greg all at once. She was telling the truth. He'd been wrong about her. She hadn't betrayed him. Relief, sweet and sure, settled into his bones. But that was immediately replaced by worry. What had she gotten herself into? Why hadn't she told him about it before her accident? What would happen now? I texted him, after I woke up. What? Why'd you do that? At the look on her face, like she already felt bad about it and didn't need him to heap scorn upon her, he frowned. Forget it. What's done is done. What did you say, and what did he say? Her lips slid into a frown, then she handed him her phone. He read the texts with mounting concern. 
This guy sounded unreasonable, even dangerous. But was running away the right thing to do? The right way to handle this? All his life, Greg had faced his fears, faced his challenges. But this was different. He wasn't the one who was being threatened. It was Olivia, and he would do whatever it took to protect her. We should call the police, he said. She shook her head, her eyes bracketed with fear. We can't. A scoffing sound left Greg's lips. Why? Because this guy, he held up the phone. This scumbag, who we don't even know told you not to? Olivia's shoulders slumped as she looked at him. Partly, but also because we don't know what, well, what I agreed to. What if it's illegal? What if I did something that could get me arrested? What if I could go to prison? Her voice was nearly breathless, and the fear and worry emanated off of her like too much perfume. The thought of Olivia in prison was too horrible to consider. Of course, he wouldn't let that happen. But was this something they could face on their own? He took her hands in his, the familiar feel of her soft skin sending memories streaming through his mind. I won't let that happen, but I don't think we should do this on our own. What are you saying? She pulled her hands from his. Are you going to call the police even though I asked you not to? When she put it that way, it was harder to be certain they should involve the authorities. Greg, please. The pleading in her eyes was unmistakable. He'd never been able to deny her what she wanted, and he wouldn't start now. With Greg's statement, Olivia's fear had magnified a thousandfold. Maybe telling him the truth had been a mistake. Was that why she hadn't told him in the first place? Because she'd known he would want to call the police? Because she'd known she was doing something illegal? Something she could get in serious trouble for? The idea was horrifying. How could she have gotten herself involved in something illegal? Something that could destroy her fabulous life? What an idiot she'd been. Jumping to conclusions wasn't the answer. It was just as likely that she wasn't doing anything wrong at all. But then why hadn't she wanted Greg to know... Dang this memory loss. It was a complete liability, and so very frustrating. If you don't want me to call the police, Greg said, his eyes softening, then I won't. Relief, pure and sweet, poured over her. He really was wonderful. Thank you. He took her hands in his once again. I've got your back, Olivia. The feel of his large hands enveloping hers gave her a feeling of security. She had no idea if he could actually help her or protect her or get her out of this, but she was glad he was by her side, that she could count on him. That's what marriage is all about, he added with a meaningful look. Being there for each other. Olivia couldn't miss the love in his eyes or the tender way he stroked her hands with his thumbs. But what was she supposed to say in return? Her heart was pulling toward him so hard, but she'd only known him for a few days— much too soon to tell him she felt the same way about him as he felt about her, even if her feelings were rapidly growing in that direction. Turning her focus to the problem at hand, she was glad she'd told him all she knew. She only wished she'd shared the details with him when she'd known what those details were. Maybe then none of this would be happening. But that was just wishful thinking. Nothing that would do any good now. Instead, they needed to deal with the situation in front of them. I'm so sorry about this, she said as her stomach churned with worry. I'm sorry I did. She looked upward and shook her head. Whatever it was, I did. Then she met his gaze, which was unwavering from hers. He folded her hands together and cupped them in his. Look, the past is the past. We can't change it, so let's meet it head on. His tone was so confident that for a moment Olivia had complete faith that he would know what to do, that he could fix it. Okay, she said. What now? Chapter 22 Greg had no clue what to do next, but with Olivia looking at him with such trust, those blue eyes bright with hope, he knew it was up to him to come up with a solution. But first, he needed more information. Does this guy... He grimaced. Let's call him BG. BG? Why BG? Greg chuckled. For bad guy... That earned him a smile. Okay, makes sense. So, does BG know where you live? Olivia's forehead puckered. In that memory, 
He said he did, so I guess he does. Her shoulders were tight as she looked first toward the hallway and then toward the window as if she expected BG to burst into the room at any moment, which, as far as Greg knew, wasn't a crazy assumption. The sun shone brightly. The extra long days of sunshine was one of the best things about June. I have a good security system on our property, Olivia. Just to prove it, he jumped up and went to a control panel near the door and activated the alarm before coming back to sit beside her. Wrinkling her brow, she said, What if he's already scoped this place out? Or what if he, I don't know, comes by boat? You know, on the lake. There's nothing between us and the lake. If anyone tries to open a door or a window, the alarm will sound. She nodded, but her hands twisted together in her lap. Her phone rang, startling them both. She picked it up and looked at the screen. It's my mom. Her eyes were wide with fear, although a tinge of hope shone there as well. Olivia couldn't believe her mother had finally called her back. Eager to speak to her, she swiped the phone to answer. Then to show Greg that she had no more secrets, she put the phone on speaker and set it on her leg. Not wanting to waste a moment, she jumped right in. Mom, what's going on? Olivia? Of course it's me. What have you gotten me involved in? Her voice rose in pitch with every question. What agreement did I make? Who is this guy who doesn't give second chances? Oh, baby. I'm so sorry. I didn't want you to get involved, but you insisted. You insisted, Olivia. Insisted on what, Mom? Tell me. She thought her head might explode if she didn't get an immediate answer. Am I on speakerphone? Yes, Mom. I told Greg everything I know, which is pretty much nothing. He wants to help. Tell us. Both of us. What you did. I'm sorry, Greg. You've done so much for me. And this time I wanted to solve my problems on my own. But I messed up. Badly. Look, Caroline. I'm not happy about any of this. Especially that you dragged Olivia into your mess. Now we've got to fix it. But that won't happen if you don't tell us everything. A soft sigh came across the line. Okay. Her voice was resigned. Olivia looked at Greg and mouthed the word, finally. He nodded, but his mouth was tight. You know I've tried to stop, her mother said. But it's a disease, an addiction. You know that, right? Olivia hated hearing her mother talk like this. This was not the mother she remembered. Hearing her say the words was so much worse than when Greg had broken the news that her mother had a drug problem. Then, she could almost believe he was lying. But there was no denying this. Her heart was heavy. Right, she said. I understand. Although she didn't understand at all. I had to get what I needed. What my body needed. I had to get it somehow. As Olivia pictured her mother strung out, desperate for a fix, tears flooded her eyes. Why didn't you come to me, Mom? I have come to you. You and Greg. Too many times already. I couldn't... I just couldn't do it again. Her mother's voice cracked. I was desperate, Olivia. You have to understand. Trying to get her emotions under control, Olivia drew in a ragged breath before slowly exhaling. Greg's arm went around her. Grateful she wasn't alone in this, she leaned against him. Mom, what did you do? Her mother had always been so practical, so on top of things. The idea that she would do something crazy, something dangerous, just to get a fix, was, well, it was hard for Olivia to wrap her mind around. I found someone who was willing to help me. There was a defensive edge to her voice. Help you how? He gave me what I needed. That's all. And by giving her what she needed, she meant giving her drugs. Olivia understood that, although it made her sick. He didn't just give the drugs to you, Mom. What did he want in exchange? And what did it have to do with her, she wondered. How was she tied to this? You're right. He did ask a favor. A favor? Olivia looked at Greg and shook her head. He didn't say a word, just looked stoic. What was the favor? He asked me to deliver a few of his, uh, his products to some other people. Greg went rigid. He had you distribute? That's a felony. I know. Her voice had the defensive edge again. But no one found out. 
That doesn't make it okay, Mom. Who was this woman, and what had she done with her mother? Was it just the one time? Silence for several moments. No. Olivia's lips turned down. How many times, Mom? I don't know. I didn't count. Oh my gosh, Olivia murmured as she covered her face with her hands. Then she dropped her hands to her lap. Mom, what does this have to do with me? Her mother was a hot mess, clearly. But why on earth had Olivia gotten involved? Why had she insisted on getting involved? If her mother was to be believed. On one of the runs, there was a, well, an incident. Her mother spoke of this run like it was a regular errand, like going grocery shopping. Olivia looked at Greg, who was shaking his head. He'd caught the casual way she'd spoken, too. What incident, Caroline? Chapter 23 Olivia waited to hear what her mother had to say, anxious to learn the truth. Someone must have known what I had, her mom began, because a man robbed me, took all of the product and all of the cash that I was supposed to give to Eddie. Eddie? Olivia asked. But the moment she heard the name, she knew it was the name of the man from her dream memory, the man who had sent the text. Yeah, Eddie's the one I was doing the favor for. Sounds like more than a favor, Greg interjected. Sounds like you work for him. It doesn't matter what you call it. Her mother huffed a breath. That was only the beginning of my problems with him. What else happened, Mom? I may have, uh, kept some of the, of the product for myself. Once or twice. She sighed. And maybe some of the money I was supposed to turn over. Olivia couldn't think, couldn't face what her mother had done. She'd stolen from a drug dealer. Why did he trust you to deliver the product? In the first place, her mother laughed, actually laughed. Who would suspect me? A middle-aged woman. Right. Olivia's voice nearly cracked. Anyway, he wasn't happy when he found out. Olivia couldn't stop herself. Imagine that. Don't get smart with me. I'm still your mother. Somehow their roles felt reversed, but Olivia held her tongue. Caroline. Greg's voice was soft and resigned tired. How is Olivia tied to this? That's when Olivia remembered that Greg knew about each and every time they'd helped her mother, had been there from the beginning, had dealt with all her issues. Guilt that she'd brought so much trouble into his life sunk into Olivia's heart, and she wished she could take it all away. I didn't know who else to call. So you called Olivia. Greg's tone was incredulous. You called my wife to help you out of a jam with a drug dealer? What were you thinking? As much as Olivia hated what was happening, hated what had become of her mother, she didn't like the way Greg was speaking to her. Maybe her mother deserved it. Probably did deserve it. But it still didn't sit well with her. Placing her hand on Greg's knee, she shook her head. His lips clamped shut and his nostrils flared. Then he looked away from her. So this was why she hadn't told him that her mother had contacted her and that she was helping her. Because she had known that Greg had reached the end of his patience with her mother, that he would refuse to help again. Wanting Greg to know she did care about him, about what he thought, she gently squeezed his knee before saying, Then what, Mom? You said you'd help me. Her tone was soft, almost meek. Greg leapt to his feet and stormed across the room, pausing with his back to Olivia before turning around and walking toward her, stopping a few feet away and glaring at the phone, his arms folded across his chest. Heart pounding at the fury emanating from him, Olivia was tempted to take the phone off speaker, but she knew he needed to hear the whole story. How did I help? She asked her mother. Eddie, he threatened to, well, to kill me. Olivia pictured the man she'd met with in the car, the man who scared her so deeply. Trying to imagine how her mother had felt when he had threatened to kill her, Olivia's heart traveled into her throat. It was obvious now why she had agreed to help her mother. How could she not? Her mother continued. He said he would only give me one chance, but that if I paid back the money I'd taken and paid for the, the product I'd taken and what was lost in the robbery, plus some extra to pay for the trouble I'd caused him, he wouldn't, wouldn't kill me. 
Olivia rubbed at her temples in an attempt to stop the headache that was blossoming there. What a horrible, horrible mess. So you came to me? Yes, I... I couldn't get my hands on that kind of money. How much, Caroline? Greg's tone was even, controlled. A hundred thousand dollars. Her tone was just above a whisper, as if she didn't want to admit how deep a hole she'd dug for herself. Olivia's mouth fell open. A hundred thousand dollars? She'd never had that much money in her life. Why had she agreed to help? How could she have possibly helped? Then it dawned on her. Greg must earn millions. Was $100,000 disposable income to them? Olivia looked at Greg, whose mouth was set in a grim line. His eyes bored into hers. Why didn't you come to me? Frustrated and upset, Olivia felt her hackles rising. How should I know? I don't remember any of this. With a shake of his head, Greg turned away, his jaw tight. Angry at herself and angry at her mother, Olivia stared at the phone. Why did I meet with this guy? Eddie, why did he even have to know I was helping you? You didn't trust me with the money. Olivia almost said something snarky, but she held back. Her mother went on. You said you wanted to talk to him directly. Work out the details with him. What were the details, Mom? I'm not sure exactly. I just know you were supposed to give him the money four days ago, but you hadn't gotten it yet. I imagine he wasn't very happy that you didn't come through. So now this was her fault? Four days ago? Greg asked, a funny look on his face. Yes. Olivia looked at Greg, whose forehead was creased. Four days ago, Olivia crashed her car. Do you think that's why I didn't give him the money? Olivia asked. Greg looked at the phone. What time on that day were they supposed to meet? If I'm remembering right. Olivia told me she was supposed to pay him that morning. Greg's eyes widened. I got the call about your accident just after lunch. I don't understand, Olivia said. What are you thinking? Greg ran his hands through his hair. Then, with his eyes closed, he loudly exhaled. After a moment, he looked straight at Olivia. Your car crash was no accident. Chapter 24 Shocked to think someone, Eddie, had purposely run her off the road, Olivia felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end. Then again, maybe she was misunderstanding what Greg was implying. What are you saying? I think your mother's business partner. He's not my business partner, her mother shouted over the phone. Greg shook his head, then he focused on Olivia. I think when you didn't show up to pay him off, he tracked you down and ran you off the road to teach you a lesson. Olivia had to admit that it made sense. And it seemed Eddie wasn't the type of man you stood up, especially when it came to money. It's all my fault, her mother said, her voice on the edge of tears. I should never have called you. That's right, you shouldn't have. Not able to deal with Greg's hard feelings or her mother's remorse, Olivia threw her hands in the air. Stop it. Then she looked at Greg, Maybe my accident was just a coincidence, although she didn't really believe that. Greg had had enough of Caroline and the problems she'd caused them. He scooped up Olivia's phone. Caroline, I want you to contact this Eddie and tell him that Olivia won't be bailing you out of your mess and that you'll figure out some other way to pay him. Let us know after you talk to him and do it immediately. Without waiting for her to reply, he stabbed the screen to end the call then he looked at Olivia, who was staring at him, her mouth open in disbelief as her eyebrows jerked together. Why'd you do that? Okay, maybe he'd been a bit rash. But he was tired of all of this. Tired of Caroline putting them through so much grief. He'd needed to do something drastic to get the message across to both her and Olivia that she needed to fix her own problems. But maybe hanging up on her and putting it all on her when it seemed doubtful that she'd be able to fix it had been the wrong thing to do. I can't believe you just did that. Olivia's eyes snapped with fury. What do you expect my mother to do? Clenching his jaw, Greg's emotions bounced between anger at Olivia for volunteering to help her mother when such a dangerous person was involved, and adoration for her willingness to put aside her own safety to help someone in need. 
Loudly exhaling, Greg scraped his hands through his hair. Look, let's give her a chance. She knows this guy. Maybe, he shook his head, maybe she can work something out. Olivia's lips pressed together, but she didn't reply. Exasperated with her, but loving her nonetheless, he sat beside her and held up her phone. I want to show you something. Then he pulled up the message thread that they'd had with Eddie. He scrolled through the thread and pointed to the text that said, Looks like you didn't hear me, but if that's how you want to play it. Olivia read it, then looked at him. What about it? Her tone still held an edge of irritation. See what he says there? Inferring that he sent some kind of message that we didn't pay attention to. I'll bet he's talking about running you off the road. Even as Greg spoke, a memory blasted into Olivia's head. Driving along a back road, her mind in turmoil over how to get the money to end the awful situation she found herself in. Debating whether to tell Greg, arguing with herself over what to do, worried about not showing up to pay Eddie what she'd promised, fearful about the consequences. Another car appearing in her rearview mirror, getting closer, closer, pulling up alongside her like he was going to pass her, but instead, without warning, ramming his car directly into her front end, forcing her off of the road, rolling over at least once and coming to rest in a ditch, her car slamming into the dirt, her body jerking painfully against the seatbelt as her right leg jammed against the floor. Moments later, a man at her window, Eddie, his eyes cold and hard, his lips curled in fury, pounding on her window then screaming through the glass. I want my money! Olivia cowering in terror, Eddie leaving, Olivia still terrified, opening her door and carefully getting out. As the memory ran through her mind over and over, her entire body went cold with fear, and she began trembling. You remembered something. Nodding, Olivia battled the panic that made her want to curl into a ball in a corner of the room. What is it? Greg asked as he put his arms around her. She sank against him, his physical strength, his powerful commitment to her, bringing a sense of comfort and security. After several moments, she managed to control her trembling. You were right, she said, surprised at how calm she sounded. It wasn't an accident. It was Eddie. He ran me off the road. Then she told him what she remembered, ending with, The last thing I remember is getting out of the car. The paramedics found you partway up the embankment. He visibly swallowed. Unconscious and bleeding. Olivia recalled the doctor telling her that the paramedics had said she'd hit her head on a rock. Without conscious thought, she touched the place on her head where she'd gotten stitches. All her troubles stemmed from this mess with her mother. Softly sighing, she dropped her hands to her lap. I wish you would have told me about this from the start. Greg's voice was soft, tender. So do I. She also wished her returning memories were good ones. Ones that showed Greg, their marriage, all their happy times. The only things she'd remembered had to do with a horrible drug dealer who had brought chaos into their lives. Now we know what he's capable of. We also know what's going on, she said. Let me text him again. If he wants his money, Greg threw one hand up. Hold on. What? What makes you think I'm going to give my hard-earned money to some drug dealer? This was a wrinkle she hadn't considered. At least this new version of her hadn't considered it. Obviously, the old Olivia knew not to ask, which was why she'd tried to do it on her own in the first place. Wanting to point that out, she opened her mouth to speak. But before she could, Greg spoke. Your mother created this problem. Let's give her a chance to fix it. Greg, she doesn't have that kind of money, and I don't think Eddie cares where the money comes from. Plus, evidently, I already told him that I would pay him. This isn't just about my mother anymore. Whether we like it or not, I'm on the hook for the money. Greg's lips pressed together in a slight grimace. Then he ran his fingers through his hair. You may be right, but I don't know. What don't you know? Because I'll tell you what I know. I know a very dangerous man is expecting me to hand over $100,000. The amount kind of staggered her still, although she believed Greg could come up with it if he had to. I know that he said he doesn't give second chances, but I also know that he wants his money, and the only way he'll get it is if he gives me the opportunity to give it to him. 
Greg was quiet for several moments. Then he took Olivia's hands in his. If anyone's going to give him the money, it's me. Then he locked his eyes with hers. I'm not going to let anything else happen to you. Deeply touched that Greg was willing to protect her, Olivia managed a smile. Are you saying we can give him the money? Frowning, he said, I'm not happy about being blackmailed by a drug dealer, but I'll do whatever it takes to keep you safe. A muscle worked in his jaw. But let's give your mother some time. See if she's able to work something out. Olivia was beyond grateful that Greg was willing to take this on, and she understood his desire to have her mother figure it out on her own. But she had very little optimism that her mother would be able to work it out. A few minutes later, her mother called. Chapter 25 Hello? Olivia was on edge. Had her mother managed to make a new agreement with Eddie? Or were she and Greg still in danger? I'm so sorry, Olivia. That wasn't a good sign. What happened, Mom? I tried. I really did. But he wants his money, and he knows I don't have it. She paused. I asked him if he ran you off the road, and he said... Her voice began to shake. He said, next time you wouldn't, you wouldn't make it out alive. Her mother burst into sobs, huge racking sobs. Then she started talking, but she was crying too hard to be understood. Chills raced over Olivia's body. She had no doubt that Eddie's threat wasn't idle. Not when she remembered the absolute fury in his eyes when he'd screamed at her through her car window. Calm down, Caroline, Greg said as he put an arm around Olivia. There was no way he would let Eddie, or anyone else, harm his wife. Take a breath and tell us what you just said. Deep breathing sounded over the line, then a shuddering breath. He said someone has to pay for stealing and lying and... Tears filled her voice again. I told him to take me, that I would pay for it. More sobs. With my life if I have to. But he said... There were more shuddering breaths. He said my life is worthless. They could hear more tears. He said it has to be Olivia. He said to tell you he said that. Her sobs turned nearly hysterical. Greg's entire body tensed. This man was threatening his wife, threatening to hurt her, to maybe even kill her. For what? Some money? Olivia was priceless. No amount of money was worth taking her away from him. His arms tightened around her, which was when he realized she was shaking with sobs. I won't let him hurt you, Greg murmured in her ear. I'll die before I let anything happen to you. His voice was intense, his words spoken with fierceness. You hear me? I love you more than life itself, Olivia. Greg's words penetrated Olivia's mind, sank into her soul, sang in her heart, and she believed him, knew he meant it. The panic and terror that had taken over her body at her mother's words began to recede just a little, and her tears slowed to a trickle. What are we going to do? Greg was quiet, and Olivia hoped he was coming up with a plan, because she had no idea what to do. We've got to go, Caroline. What can I do to fix this? Her voice was filled with sorrow. Frustration welled up inside Olivia, and she spoke before thinking it through. You can get clean and stay that way. I will. I promise. Olivia looked at Greg whose expression said, we've heard that before. I know what you're thinking, her mother said. But I mean it this time. I can't believe what I've done to you. You're my darling daughter, my only child. You mean the world to me, more than drugs. Olivia heard her mother sniffle. I promise on all that I love that I am done with drugs. Olivia dearly hoped so. We need to go, Caroline. We expect you to follow through. I will. I love you, Olivia. As she pictured her mother, Olivia felt fresh tears fill her eyes. I love you too, Mom. Greg disconnected the call, then pulled up Olivia's texts. What are you going to do? She asked. With a grim expression, Greg said, See if this Eddie really wants his money. Then he typed a message. It said, This is Olivia's husband, Greg. You'll deal with me now. New agreement. I'll give you the hundred grand Olivia promised. Then you disappear from our lives and stay away from Caroline. He pressed send. 
As she read the message, saw all that Greg was doing for her and her mother, Olivia's heart contracted with deep gratitude and something approaching love. He was such a good man, willing to solve the problem she'd brought on herself. He really did have her back. She could see why she'd fallen in love with him, why she'd married him. Thank you, Greg. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to give away the money you've worked so hard for. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. He shook his head as he sort of chuckled, then his eyes bored into hers. It's just money, Olivia. You are what's important to me. I can always earn more money. I can never replace you. Olivia's heart pounded as she stared into eyes filled with love. He lifted his hand and slid a finger along her jaw. Energy skittered across her skin, energy that made her lean into his hand and close her eyes. She could feel Greg moving closer to her, and a moment later his lips brushed across her cheek before he whispered, I love you, Olivia. The flame that his touch had ignited when he'd stroked her jaw exploded into an inferno, and she found it hard to catch her breath. Greg, she murmured. Yes? Her emotions were all over the place. Powerful attraction, overwhelming gratitude, a need to feel safe. Not knowing what to say, she simply rested her head against his shoulder. His arms went around her and she stayed within the circle of his embrace, savoring the feel of him, the strength of him, the knowledge that he loved her. If she could stay like this forever, her life would be perfect. But she knew that reality would get in the way. Their idyllic moment was interrupted by the chime of a text notification. Reluctantly, Olivia withdrew from Greg's arms, and after he picked up her phone, they read Eddie's reply together. It said, The great Greg Sinclair himself. You must be the jerk who texted earlier. The one who said there would be consequences. You were right. My price has gone up. Half a million, and then I'll disappear from your lives. Olivia's heart dropped as she stared at the screen. Half a million? Almost afraid to see Greg's reaction, she tore her eyes from the phone and looked at his face. His jaw was set, and his eyes were hard. What if it was too much? What if he refused? What would happen? Would Eddie come after her? This guy was really getting on Greg's nerves. Who did he think he was, telling him that his price had quintupled? Then he looked at Olivia. Her face was pale and her shoulders were tight as she gripped her knees. It's too much. Her voice was just above a whisper. You don't have to pay it. We'll figure something else out. But her words were in sharp contrast to the fear vibrating off of her. Did she really believe he would put her at risk? Over money? If she thought that, she didn't know him at all. He almost laughed at the thought. No, she didn't know him. He had to keep reminding himself of that. With the way she'd let him hold her moments before, he'd forgotten that she didn't know him, didn't remember their relationship or their marriage. Holding her in his arms had felt natural. It was something he'd done hundreds of times. And the way she'd melted against him? Yeah, she was feeling it too. His love for her glowed, bright and clear. Olivia, his voice was soft, tender. Don't say that. To me, you're priceless. Tears filled her eyes and rolled down her cheeks. He cupped her face with his hands and used his thumbs to wipe away the tears. Hey, no need to cry. I don't... She sniffled and shook her head. I don't deserve you. How could she say that? She was everything to him, had been since the moment he'd met her. You have that backwards, my love. How can you believe that, after all I've put you through? She had to understand something. Olivia, it's not you who put me through this. It's your mother who put us both through this. See? You'd be better off without me. Me and my mother and her problems. She sniffled again. Because it seems like we're a package deal. He softly laughed. Now it's your turn to see. See what? The fact that you won't turn your back on your mother is one of the many things I love about you. A tiny smile curved her lips and he knew he was starting to cut through the guilt she felt. The security alarm went off. Greg tensed, his gaze shooting in every direction. This was it. Eddie was here. Chapter 26
At the sound of the alarm ringing, panic engulfed Olivia. What's happening? Is he here? Is he inside? Greg's eyes were wide as he leapt to his feet and raced to the control panel on the wall. Don't touch that. A voice shouted over the alarm. And when Olivia's gaze followed the voice, she gasped. Back away. Eddie stood in the doorway, holding a gun that was pointed at Greg. Greg had been reaching for the panel, but he stopped. No, Olivia shouted as she grabbed her crutches. She had to protect Greg, had to keep Eddie from hurting him. None of this was his fault. He shouldn't be the one to suffer. She set her booted foot on the floor and looked toward Eddie. But when she met his gaze, the malevolence in his eyes froze her in place. Trying to intervene was complete folly. She had a broken ankle, could barely get around. Did she really think she could stop him? Stay there. The aim of Eddie's gun bounced between her and Greg. Do what he says, Greg said, his voice insistent. Listen to your husband, Eddie said with a smirk. Then he focused on Greg. Turn off the alarm, and when your security company calls, tell them it was a false alarm. When Greg hesitated, Eddie stepped forward and pressed the gun to his head. Terrified, Eddie would shoot him right in front of her. Olivia yelled, Do it, Greg, please! Greg punched in a code and the sound ceased. The silence was replaced by the pounding of Olivia's heart. She thought it might come right out of her chest. Take your phone out of your pocket. Greg did as instructed and half a second later the phone rang. Greg shifted his focus to Eddie, whose gun was still pointing steadily at him. Answer it. Greg swiped his phone. Hello? Olivia couldn't see the expression on Greg's face because he was facing Eddie, but from Greg's side of the conversation, she assumed it was the security company. No, I guess I forgot to turn it off before I opened a window. My mistake. A pause. Bye. Very good, Greg. Eddie grinned. Now, go sit by your beautiful wife. Greg wanted to body slam the guy, then pound him until he was dead, but the gun pointed directly at his head kept him in check. It was more important to comfort Olivia than to fantasize about beating Eddie to a pulp, so he clenched his jaw and strode over to Olivia, sitting on the bench and putting his arms around her. What a lovely couple, Eddie said as he stood halfway across the room. We'll give you the money, Olivia said, her voice pleading. Just don't hurt us. It'll be okay, Greg murmured. She looked at him, her eyes bracketed with terror, and Greg knew she didn't believe him. He wasn't certain that things would be okay either but he had to project confidence, if only for Olivia's sake. Besides, keeping things calm could only be beneficial. Eddie sat on a weight bench and faced Greg and Olivia. Here's what's going to happen. Using his gun as a pointer, he trained the weapon on Greg. You'll go to your bank, alone, and withdraw 500,000 in cash, then deliver it where I tell you to. The smug look on the man's face drove a spike of fury right into Greg's brain and he had to tamp down the nearly overwhelming urge to tackle the man and beat him senseless. Still, he had to do what he could to protect Olivia, and leaving her here with this evil man was not the way to do that. Wouldn't it be simpler for me to transfer the money to your account electronically? Yeah, but that's not how we're going to play this. I want it in cash, Eddie chuckled. And don't start getting any ideas of how to cross me, Greg. The way he kept saying his name, like they were friends, infuriated Greg. Oblivious to Greg's building anger, Eddie went on. One of my associates will be with you the entire time, keeping tabs on you and updating me on what you're doing, making sure you're following my instructions. Eddie grinned. In the meantime, Olivia and I will take a little field trip. No! Greg's teeth were clenched and his voice was even. Eddie's head jerked back as his eyebrows shot up. No! Then he smiled. I think you're misunderstanding, Greg. This isn't a negotiation. It's okay, Olivia whispered beside him. This was nowhere near okay. This lunatic wanted to take his wife who knew where, all to keep Greg under control. You don't need to take her anywhere. I'll get the money and I won't involve the police. Oh, I know you'll get the money. The confidence in Eddie's tone was unmistakable. And I know you won't involve the cops. You know how I know that? Because if you fail, your wife will die, slowly and painfully. Greg couldn't take it anymore. He leapt to his feet and charged Eddie, 
but the man must have anticipated Greg's action, because he stood at the same time Greg did and stepped neatly out of the way. Greg crashed into the weight machine, nearly knocking it over. This isn't a football game, Greg. Eddie stepped forward and pressed the gun to Greg's temple. Go sit by your wife so that I don't have to shoot you. Adrenaline poured through Greg's veins and his muscles vibrated with the need to do something. Even so, he kept his wits about him and silently acknowledged that he wouldn't be able to protect Olivia if he was dead. Chapter 27 Olivia's heart thundered against her ribs. As much as she understood Greg's need to resist, the thought of Eddie shooting him was too much to bear, and the sight of the gun pressed to Greg's forehead horrified her. Please, Greg, she pleaded. Please sit by me. His face was a study in granite, but he did as she asked. The moment he sat beside her, she grabbed his hand and clung to it with both of hers. Just do what he says. His nostrils flared. Listen to your wife, Greg. Shut up. Greg nearly growled. Olivia tensed, terrified Eddie would hurt Greg in retaliation, but he just laughed. Olivia's muscles relaxed the tiniest bit, but she still felt like she was hanging over the edge of a very high, very precarious cliff by the tips of her fingers. Time to go. Eddie's attention was now on Olivia. Using his gun, he gestured toward the hallway. Let's go. What? Olivia's grip on Greg's hands tightened and her knuckles turned white. No. She's not going anywhere. Greg's tone was resolute. Eddie's eyes glinted with malice. Wrong. Then he glanced toward the hallway and whistled. Almost instantly, two men appeared in the doorway, then stepped into the room. One of them was tall. Probably as tall as Greg. And big. He was bald. Tattoos covered both arms and climbed his neck. The other man was average height with hair held back in a ponytail. Eddie gestured to the bigger man. You babysit Greg. Then he looked at Ponytail. Get her into the car. Both men marched toward Olivia and Greg, and when Ponytail reached for Olivia, abject panic took over. No, she screamed, her fingers curling around Greg's arm. No, leave me alone. Greg's arms were locked around her. Ponytail grabbed her crutches. Get up. The big guy grabbed both of Greg's wrists and yanked but Greg's grip didn't budge. Okay, Eddie said. Enough of the hysteria. He walked over to Olivia and pressed the gun against her head. He stood on the opposite side of Olivia so that he was out of Greg's reach. Let go of her, Greg. Shaking with fear and with tears streaming down her face, Olivia didn't know what to do. The cold steel of the gun made the blood in her veins turn to ice. She wasn't ready to die. This is not how I want to die, she thought. You're my everything, Greg whispered in her ear. Then his arms loosened from around her and fell away. She was adrift on a sea of terror and dread. The press of the gun left her skull, and out of the corner of her eye, she saw Eddie shift his aim to Greg. Ponytail gripped Olivia's upper arms and pulled her up, steadying her as he handed her the crutches. She took them from him, if only to keep from toppling over. He stepped behind her effectively blocking Greg from reaching her. Panic surged through her, settling deep into her soul. She couldn't be separated from Greg. Ever since she'd woken in the hospital, he'd been there for her, had been her anchor. She needed him. Horror cascaded over her as her ears rang and her vision narrowed. Go, Ponytail said, his voice low and sharp. Frozen, it was all Olivia could do to breathe. Do you want me to shoot your husband? Eddie asked, his voice even. That snapped her out of her stupor. No. Then move. Using all the strength she could muster, physical and emotional, she forced herself to lift her crutches and began making her way across the room. Ponytail was right behind her, giving her no option but to keep going. When she reached the doorway, she stopped and looked at Greg. Over the last few days, he'd grown to mean so much to her. She'd learned to trust him, to depend on him. And now, there he was, sitting on the couch, surrounded by the big man on one side and Eddie on the other, the gun pointed at his head. The words he'd spoken, you're my everything, sank into her mind. She had no doubt that he meant it, 
and she completely believed that at one time he had been her everything, could maybe be her everything again. If only they survived this. Eddie was watching her, and when she stayed in the doorway, he pressed the barrel of the gun right against Greg's skull. Fresh terror blasted into her heart, and then, like a flash of bright sunlight, a memory surfaced. Greg, kneeling in front of her, a ring in a velvet box open in his hand, him speaking. You're my everything, Olivia. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me? The feelings she had that day, soul-deep love and extreme happiness, swept over her now. And right behind those feelings was extreme dread. At the idea of losing him, at the reality that she might never see him again, might never feel his arms around her, that he would no longer be in her life. It was too much to bear. Olivia's heart began collapsing in on itself. She thought she might die, actually die. But then, like a rainbow appearing in the midst of a storm, all her missing memories blazed into her mind. Of Greg, of their lives together, of the love and devotion they had for each other. It all came roaring back. He was her best friend, the only person in the world she wanted to be with. Without him, her life would lose all meaning, all purpose. And Eddie's gun was pressed against his head. Tears rushed into her eyes. She couldn't lose him. Eddie's finger moved to the trigger. No! She screamed. Eddie gestured with his head toward the door. Ponytail grabbed her by the waist and propelled her forward. Wait! She had to tell Greg how she felt. Had to tell him she remembered. Had to tell him she loved him. Greg! Ponytail bodily lifted her and moved her out of the room and into the hallway. Then, after stepping into the hallway himself, he yanked the door to the gym closed, cutting her off from Greg. No! I have to tell him! Please! Let me tell him! Ponytail slapped a hand over her mouth and spoke into her ear. Shut up! Or I will shut you up! Got it? Frantic with fear, Olivia nodded. Ponytail removed his hand from her mouth. If only she had full use of her legs. This was the moment she would run from him. Run like the wind. Except even if she could, she wouldn't. Because that would endanger Greg. That was something she would not do. Especially now that her memory had returned. He was her everything. Which meant, to keep him safe, she needed to cooperate. I'll be quiet, she said, her voice soft. Good. Now move it. Hating Eddie and his associates with every fiber of her being, she crutched her way down the hall and toward the front door. Chapter 28 When Greg had built his house, he'd had heavy doors put in, thick walls, good insulation, which is why, although he heard Olivia yelling, he couldn't make out what she said. All he knew was that he had to get to her. Now, no matter the danger, Eddie's gun was trained on him. He'd lifted it from Greg's head once Olivia was out of the room, but in the deepest part of Greg's soul, he didn't care. All he cared about was Olivia. Not only could she not walk, but since she was dependent on her crutches, even her hands were of no use. She was completely at the mercy of these monsters. A fresh burst of adrenaline cascaded through Greg's veins, and after the briefest of hesitations, he leapt to his feet and burst toward the door like he was carrying the football and about to score the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Except, this was so much more important than the Super Bowl. Boom! A bullet whizzed past him at the same time that the blast of the gun filled his ears. Still several feet from the door, Greg froze. You worry me, Greg, Eddie said from behind him, his voice calm. We haven't even left the house yet, and already you're failing to follow directions. What was that? Olivia asked, her voice breathless with panic. She and Ponytail were halfway to the front door, but she'd heard a gunshot. She was sure of it. That's the sound you're gonna hear in the moment I shoot you, if you don't keep going. His words only confirmed what she was desperate to deny. Someone had shot a gun. Distraught with fear, she stopped where she was. Are you deaf? Ponytail said through gritted teeth. I said to move. If something had happened to Greg, there was no point in listening to Ponytail or anyone else. 
With a stubbornness born of desperation and terror, Olivia turned to Ponytail and said, I'm not going anywhere until I know my husband is all right. His eyebrows jerked together, but as she stared him down, his face relaxed. Tell you what, when we get outside, I'll call Eddie and we'll ask him. That wasn't good enough. No, I want to know now. I have to know now. He glared at her, his lips curling. You don't set the conditions. She was getting to him. Glad, she pressed her luck. I'm not moving. Not until I know Greg is okay. Ponytail's jaw tightened. Then he glanced at her legs before meeting her eyes with a smirk. How'd you like me to break your other ankle? The thought of that made her sick. He shook his head. Didn't think so. Then he grinned. Now, move it. All of her bravado fell away and tears filled her eyes. Please, I have to know he's okay. Loudly exhaling, Ponytail shook his head, but he took his phone out of his pocket, tapped a few buttons, then pressed it to his ear. Sorry, boss. Heard a gunshot, and the lady is refusing to follow directions until she knows her husband is okay. Olivia watched his expression for any clues as to what had happened. He handed her his phone. Greg? You both are a pain in my... Eddie's words trailed off. Greg, tell your wife you're fine. Hey, sweetheart. I'm fine. Nothing happened. Are you okay? Yes. She wanted to tell him her memory had returned, that she loved him. But before she had the chance, Eddie was back on the line. Satisfied? No. Put him back on. I need to talk to him. No. Before she could protest further, Ponytail snatched the phone from her hand. Yeah, he said into the phone. We're going. Then he tapped the screen and tucked the phone in his pocket. No more stalling. Let's go. Though sorely disappointed that she hadn't been able to tell Greg anything, she was beyond relieved that he was all right. Fine. They continued toward the door, and once they made it outside, Olivia was almost surprised to see how bright and sunny it was. It was a June afternoon, but in her heart it felt like the middle of a dark and dreary winter. Glancing around to see if anyone was about, to see if anyone could help them, for once Olivia regretted the privacy their yard provided them. No one could see into their property. Two black SUVs were parked in their circular driveway. Both looked like the car Olivia had met Eddie in before. Ponytail approached the one parked in front and opened the rear door. Get in. With a glance inside, she saw yet another man, this one in the driver's seat. Not knowing what else to do, she hoisted herself inside. Ponytail shut the door. Then, after placing her crutches in the front passenger seat, he came around the other side and climbed in, sitting beside her. Let's go, he said to the driver. They pulled away. Where are we going? Doesn't matter. It did to her, although she was glad Eddie wasn't with them. If it doesn't matter, then tell me. Ponytail ignored her, staring ahead as they drove down the road. So sweet, Eddie said with a sneer as he stood beside Greg. The way your wife was worried about you. Good thing I didn't shoot you, huh? Greg couldn't argue with that. Yeah. Don't be stupid again or I will shoot you. Eddie smirked. Time for you to get my money. Eddie gestured with his chin toward the large man who had become like a shadow to Greg. That's Tom. He's going to chaperone you while you withdraw my money. Knowing there wasn't much he could do besides cooperate, Greg frowned. Fine, let's get this over with. Grinning, Eddie stepped closer to Greg. I like your attitude. Eager to please. Eager to do this and be done with it was more accurate. Whatever, he said. Eddie looked at Greg's workout clothes. Change into something else first. Tom will accompany you. More annoyed than scared, Greg glanced at Tom, who had opened the door before stepping into the hallway. Greg followed, looking in both directions on the off chance Olivia was in sight. When he didn't see her, he strode to his bedroom. While he changed, he pictured his wife, helpless and vulnerable and in the hands of one of Eddie's goons. Where had they taken her? She'd said she was okay, so that was a relief. If only there had been some way for her to escape. If only he knew she was safe. Then he would put up a fight. It wasn't that he cared about the money. It was the idea that a bully could come into his home, take his wife prisoner, hold him against his will, 
and force him to do his bidding. It grated. Despite that, he wouldn't do anything to endanger Olivia, even if she didn't remember him, even if she didn't love him, even if, when this was over, she couldn't fall in love with him and decided she didn't want to be with him. The idea that he could lose her by her choice hurt most of all. Regardless, he would do whatever he could to keep her safe. Wearing dress slacks and a button-up shirt, Greg was ready to roll. He walked out of his closet to find Eddie sitting on the side of the bed, flipping through Greg and Olivia's wedding album. Eddie looked at Greg with a smirk. Such a lovely couple. It would be a shame if anything happened to either one of you. Hands curling into fists, Greg ground his teeth together. He didn't know how much longer he could take Eddie's taunts. Eddie stood. All right, let's get this done. He looked at his associate. Tom, you know what to do. Then he turned to Greg. I'll see you when you have the cash. Hold on, you're not coming with us? Shaking his head, Eddie laughed. No, I'm going to spend time with your beautiful wife while you're getting my money. Nostrils flaring, it took every ounce of Greg's self-control not to launch himself at Eddie. The only thing holding him back was the knowledge that Olivia was at the mercy of a man who wouldn't hesitate to hurt her. And Greg had no doubt Eddie would enjoy punishing Greg through hurting Olivia. Greg turned to Tom. Let's go. The sound was nearly a growl. Then, without waiting for a response, he strode out of the room and down the hall. A few moments later, he entered the garage. A red Ferrari and a white SUV took up a portion of the space. The spot where Olivia parked her Audi was conspicuously empty. It was in the shop. Seeing that empty space and knowing that Eddie was responsible for Olivia's broken ankle and amnesia was almost enough to make Greg turn around and march right back to Eddie with his fists swinging. Don't forget this, Eddie said from behind him. Startled, Greg spun around. Eddie held a backpack, a grin stretching his lips. To put my money in. Scowling, Greg snatched it out of his hand. Then he walked toward the SUV. We'll take the Ferrari. Tom said, the first time Greg had heard him speak. Greg frowned, but walked toward the driver's side of his Ferrari. I'll drive, Tom said. Angry pressure built inside Greg's skull, resulting in a pounding headache. Tom held his hand out. Keys. Scowling deeper, Greg fished his keys out of his pocket before tossing them to Tom. Then it occurred to him that if he was a passenger and Tom was occupied with driving, maybe that would give him an opportunity. He held back a smile. Chapter 29 Olivia's ankle was throbbing. She needed to elevate it, needed to ice it, needed to get away from these creeps and get back to Greg, the husband she loved so much. Instead, she was still in the car with Ponytail and the driver, sailing along a road to who knew where. Ponytail held up a bag made of black fabric. Put this over your head. Olivia recoiled. What? No. He tilted his head. I wasn't asking. Why? Why do I need to wear that? Boss's orders. Now, are you going to cooperate, or do I need to bind your hands? Suddenly exhausted by this whole ordeal, Olivia shook her head. Fine. Give it here. At least she could do it herself. She didn't want Ponytail touching her. He handed it to her, and with a mix of resignation and fury, she slid it over her head. Her world went black, the hood blocking all light. With her vision useless, she focused on her other senses, the moist heat of her breath, the bumps of the SUV as it traversed the pavement, the relative silence of the SUV's interior. To her surprise, after a while she found herself becoming drowsy. Then again, her body had been through a lot in the last few days and was working hard to heal. It was no surprise that she was worn out. Some time later, Olivia woke to someone gently shoving her shoulder while telling her to wake up. The hood had been removed, and with blinking eyes she looked around. Still in the SUV, the door next to her seat was open, and Ponytail stood there holding her crutches. They were inside an enormous warehouse. Olivia had no idea how much time had passed or how long they'd driven. Where's Greg? she asked. Don't know. Worried about him but with no idea how to help him, she took the crutches from Ponytail and silently prayed that Greg was okay. Then she slid out of the car and landed on her good foot. I need to elevate my ankle. 
Ponytail pointed to a pair of couches. Without comment, Olivia made her way to the couches, and when she reached them, she sank onto one of them, then stretched her right leg onto the cushions. Do you have any pillows? Scowling, Ponytail turned to the unoccupied couch and pulled two of the cushions from it before placing them under Olivia's right leg. Despite being furious with this man for being involved, she had a grudging appreciation that he'd made an effort. Thanks. Ponytail grunted a reply. Then he walked away. What happens now? Olivia called after him. He ignored her and Olivia was left alone. Swiveling her head to scan the space, she knew she wasn't really alone. Ponytail had gone to a small office nearby, an office with windows where he could keep an eye on her. Her mind went to Greg, reaching out to him, her heart aching for him. If something happened to him, she didn't know what she would do. He was her world. And as she thought about the last few days, and how she'd begun falling in love with him so quickly, she wasn't surprised. He was so good to her. When she considered the idea that he'd thought she'd cheated on him, her heart ached all the more. She would never do that to him. Never. But she had been foolish. She should have confided in him about this situation with Eddie from the start. If she had... She would have been able to come up with the money on time, and Eddie wouldn't have run her off the road, which meant she wouldn't have broken her ankle, wouldn't have gotten a concussion that led to amnesia. None of the ugliness that was happening now would have happened at all. Vowing to never keep a secret from Greg again, Olivia closed her eyes and reveled in all the memories she had of Greg. Their recent trip to Lake Tahoe, building their house together, hanging out in the kitchen while Greg cooked and she kept him company. Soaking up the love they had for each other, she convinced herself that they still had their whole lives in front of them. They would come out of this okay. They had to. A short time later, Eddie arrived. All Greg could think about was Olivia. How were they treating her? Was she all right? He glanced at Tom, who looked like he was having a great time driving Greg's Ferrari. Greg had been wrong in thinking he could do much of anything while a passenger. Eddie had seen to that zip-tying Greg's hands together. Tugging on the zip-ties with his wrists, Greg tried to break them apart, but they held tight. He'd already told Tom the name of the banks they would need to visit. Though Greg had never withdrawn half a million dollars at once before, he knew it was unlikely that any one bank would have that much cash on hand. Most of his money was tied up in investments, but the money he kept liquid he'd spread around to several banks. That way all of it was insured by the FDIC. Now he was glad he'd done that. Otherwise, there was no way he would be able to get half a mil in cash in one day. It took a while, but eventually Greg filled Eddie's backpack with the cash he'd demanded. At each bank, Tom had cut the zip tie from Greg's hands, but after they'd gotten back in the car, he'd put on a new one. Now, with all the money collected, Greg and Tom got back in the Ferrari. Hands, Tom demanded. Greg kept his hands in his lap. You have the money. Now take me to Olivia. Tom's eyebrows rose as he held the zip tie. If you want to see your wife, you'll do as you're told. Clenching his jaw and with nostrils flaring, Greg held his hands out in front of him and watched Tom zip tie them together. Then he listened as Tom called Eddie to let him know that all the money had been collected. They disconnected. Then Tom started the car and they began driving. When they were outside the city limits, Tom pulled over, unzipped a small pocket on the backpack, and pulled out a black hood. He held it up to Greg. Put this on. His head feeling like it was going to explode with all his pent-up fury, Greg just stared at Tom. Tom frowned. Do you want to see your wife or not? Grinding his teeth together, Greg snatched the hood from Tom's hands. But with his wrists bound, he wasn't able to get the hood over his head. Tom's lips twisted into a smirk. Need some help? Nah, I'll opt for leaving it off. Laughing, Tom shook his head. That's not an option. Holding back a smile, Greg said, Fine, you do it. Happy to help the great Greg Sinclair. Tom's words dripped with sarcasm. Keeping his eyes locked on Tom's smarmy face, Greg kept his head upright, even leaning away slightly which forced Tom to lean toward Greg. In the close quarters of the sports car, there wasn't much space between them, but just as Tom reached up with the hood, ready to slide it over Greg's head. Greg tucked his chin downward as if he was trying to help. Then, using all the fury and adrenaline pumping through his veins, he slammed the top of his head into Tom's face. 
When Tom only appeared stunned, Greg's hands shot out, and he managed to grip Tom's neck before jerking Tom hard and fast into a headbutt, again and again, until Tom slumped in the driver's seat. Chapter 30 Panting, Greg hardly noticed the discomfort in his head from where it had slammed into Tom's face. Instead, thoughts stampeded through his mind. What should he do now? How could he find Olivia? Should he call the police? Or would that endanger Olivia? First thing first. He had to get the zip tie off his wrists. He opened the passenger door and climbed out, then hurried to the driver's side and opened the door. It didn't take long to fish the knife out of Tom's pocket, the one he'd been using to cut the zip ties off at each bank. What was harder was opening the blade, but he eventually did, and after several tries, he sawed the zip tie off of his wrists. Making sure no cars were coming, Greg took Tom's forty-five out of his waistband and set it on the floor. Then he dragged Tom out of the car and deep into the bushes on the side of the road before digging several zip ties out of the man's pocket. With Tom face down in the dirt, Greg zip-tied his hands behind his back, then zip-tied his ankles together. Then he made a chain to hog-tie him. That ought to keep you out of the way for a while, Greg said with a satisfied smile. He took Tom's cell phone, jogged back to his Ferrari, tucked the pistol into his own waistband, then climbed behind the wheel. With a look toward the bushes, Greg grinned. Tom was well concealed. No one would see him, and once he regained consciousness, it would take him a while to break free of his bonds. That would give Greg the time he needed to save Olivia. But first, he needed to find her. The office door opened, then clicked shut. Olivia's head jerked in that direction, and when she saw Eddie striding toward her, a triumphant smile on his face, she didn't know if she should be happy or terrified. He came through, Eddie said as he sat on a chair near the couch where she reclined, her ankle elevated. Greg came through. This was the first time since Eddie had arrived that he'd said more than two words to her. Olivia assumed he'd been focused on what was happening with Greg. She'd been perfectly happy to have him ignore her, but now that he was there and his mood was so good, she had a question for him. Why'd you run me off the road? His smile melted away and his eyes went hard. Because you failed. Her eyes went to her booted ankle. Then she thought about her amnesia. What if she'd never regained her memory? What if she'd left Greg because of that? This man, this evil, evil man, had nearly destroyed her life. Her fury made her bold. You could have killed me. He laughed. Then he flicked his fingers like he was shooing away a pesky insect. If I'd wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. The casual way he spoke of her dying made her angry. Her eyes narrowed and her breath became shaky. You're a monster. He shrugged. A rich and powerful monster. Stunned that he knew how vile he was, yet he didn't care, Olivia had a terrible thought. What if this wasn't the end? What if he wanted more money? What if he came after them again and again? What if he was always there on the edges of their lives, ready to torment them, ready to destroy them? Or worse, what if, after Greg delivered the cash, Eddie killed them? Both options were horrible. Olivia couldn't allow either one to happen. But what could she possibly do to stop him? Scrolling through Tom's cell phone, when Greg found what he was looking for, he grinned. He'd driven a few miles farther up the road in the same direction they'd been headed. Then he'd pulled over. Now he stared at the text Eddie had sent Tom after his last phone call. A text with an address. That had to be where Olivia was. He put his Ferrari in gear and drove toward the address, arriving near it within ten minutes. It was some sort of warehouse, and it looked abandoned. Parking a distance away, he studied the building. Dirty windows spanned the front of the building. Overgrown weeds grew on either side, and no cars occupied the parking lot. Could this be where Eddie had taken Olivia? It didn't look like anyone was there. Then again, wouldn't that be the best way to disguise activity? Make it appear deserted? he had to get a closer look. He approached from the side, using the overgrown weeds as cover. Once he reached the building, he pressed himself against the wall and crept along until he reached a bank of windows. Though they were dirty, when he cupped his eyes to the glass, he was able to see in. Enough to see a grouping of furniture. Enough to see Eddie sitting in a chair, looking at someone across from him like they were having a conversation. 
Greg moved lower so that if anyone looked his way, they would have a hard time seeing him through the dirty glass. Who was Eddie talking to? Was it one of his goons? Or could it be Olivia? Peering hard through the glass, Greg made out the tip of a boot, the kind someone with a broken ankle would wear. It was poking up above the back of the couch as if whoever was wearing it was lying down with her foot elevated. It had to be Olivia. Greg's heart slammed against his chest like a caged bird frantic to get out. He had to go to her, had to protect her, had to save her. He pictured himself swooping in to rescue her, impressing her, capturing her heart, sealing a future with her. Then the reality whomped him over the head. He wasn't an action hero. He was a wide receiver in the NFL. Sure, sometimes he felt like a superstar, and a lot of people treated him like one, but in reality he was a mere mortal, a man in love with his wife, a man who would do anything to protect her. But he didn't have the skill set to save her single-handedly. Not from someone like Eddie and the men he most certainly had with him. It was true that he had Tom's forty-five, and yes, he went target shooting with his own firearm from time to time. But that wasn't the same as shooting at someone who would shoot back, someone who might shoot Olivia. As much as he wanted to burst inside and save his wife, Greg knew it was time to get help, time to call the police. Squatting on the ground below the window, he made the call, explaining that his wife had been kidnapped for ransom. There was more to the story, of course, but that was the simplest explanation, and at the moment, it was technically true. Eddie would not release Olivia until he'd been paid. Greg gave the dispatcher the address, described what he saw, then he disconnected the call and pressed his face to the glass once again. Chapter 31 Olivia didn't want to look at Eddie, didn't want to acknowledge that she was in the presence of such a horrible, evil man, but it was difficult to ignore him. The malevolence radiated off of him in waves. Oh, I'm sorry, he said with a sneer. Did I hurt your feelings when I implied your life has no value? She wouldn't let him get to her. Refusing to give him the satisfaction of an answer, she thought about Greg and the way he'd doted on her when she'd come home from the hospital. At the time, she'd wondered if it was an act, but now that her memory had returned... She remembered all the times he'd shown what a thoughtful man he was. When he made her dinner, then washed the dishes. How his back rubs were the best she'd ever had, better than from a masseuse. The way he surprised her with little gifts for no reason except to show her that he was thinking about her. Her heart blossomed with love for the man she was married to, the man she would spend the rest of her life with. If they survived this. It was time to take action, to see what Eddie's true intentions were. She lifted her gaze and looked at him. His focus was on his phone. If she just had some sort of weapon... No, she wasn't a cold-blooded killer. As much as she hated him, hated the threat he was to her family, to her happiness, she knew she wouldn't be able to live with herself if she murdered him in cold blood. Then she nearly laughed. She could barely get around... In what world would she be able to leap to her feet with a broken ankle and plunge a knife into his heart before he realized what she was doing? Not that she had a knife. A gun would work better. Then she could stay where she was. A tiny giggle erupted from her mouth at the absurdity of her thoughts. That got his attention. Something funny? His eyes were cold, flinty. All her humor evaporated. Now that she had his attention, she said... I just want to know, after Greg pays you, will you really disappear from our lives? His stare didn't waver. Yep. Somehow that didn't make her feel any better. For all she knew, he could stare a nun in the eyes and straight up lie. Still, she'd had to ask, What about my mother? Will you leave her alone? Uh-huh. She's gonna get clean. Olivia said it more as a note of defiance than because she truly believed it. Right. Annoyed that Eddie doubted that her mother could manage her addiction, Olivia frowned. If it wasn't for losers like you, she wouldn't be addicted in the first place. That wasn't exactly true, she thought. Her mother had started her addiction with prescription drugs, but it made Olivia feel better to lash out at Eddie, someone who happily provided drugs to addicts. You destroy lives for a living. I don't know how you sleep at night. He looked away from Olivia and toward the office. Yeah. Whatever. 
All of a sudden, Olivia wanted to rile him, wanted to hit a nerve, make him feel something, maybe even guilt. There's a special place in hell for people like you. Eddie rolled his eyes. His indifference only fueled the anger that had been building inside her. What kind of family did you come from that you think what you do is okay? Do they even know what you do? She paused a beat. Or do you lie to them too? Tell them that all this money you have is because you're a successful businessman? A muscle worked in his jaw. Olivia glared at him. If your mother knew what you do, she would be ashamed. He was on her before she knew what was happening, his hands circling her throat, his eyes nearly black with rage. Don't you dare talk about my mother. She couldn't breathe, couldn't breathe, couldn't breathe. With her fingers digging at Eddie's steel-like grip, Olivia's vision narrowed to pinpoints and alarm bells clanged in her ears. She was blacking out. She was going to die. And she'd never had the chance to tell Greg that she remembered him, that she loved him. The moment Greg had disconnected from dispatch, he'd pressed his face to the window. He could wait until the police got here. Everything inside appeared calm and relaxed, until it wasn't. Eddie had leapt from his chair and thrown himself on Olivia. Greg couldn't see what was happening, but the absolute rage on Eddie's face was clear enough. Without a second thought, Greg raced to the door that he'd noticed while studying the building and burst into the warehouse. Chapter 32 As Greg yanked the gun out of his waistband, his focus was locked on Eddie. The back of the couch faced him, so he wasn't able to see Olivia and exactly what was happening, but it appeared that Eddie was strangling her, killing her. They were 30 feet away, but Greg didn't waste a moment to see if any of Eddie's goons were nearby. Instead, his focus was completely on what was happening to his wife. Tearing across the concrete floor, Greg yelled, Get off of her! Eddie's head jerked up and his eyes widened. He released Olivia, but then his hands reached for the back of his waistband. Greg knew what that meant. Greg's instincts and reactions were world class. But that was in football not in dealing with dangerous criminals. Even so, it was up to him to save his wife, and those finely honed responses to split-second action never mattered as much as they did in that moment. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, Greg aimed the gun and pulled the trigger. And missed. In that moment, Eddie had reached his gun and was bringing it around. Greg pulled the trigger again. And again, he missed. Heart pounding wildly, when he saw Eddie's gun nearly to the point of aiming directly at him, Greg pulled the trigger once more. Then, before he could see if he'd hit his mark, he dove behind the couch. Ears ringing and with his back pressed to the couch, Greg struggled to hear if Eddie was coming for him. Knowing he couldn't stay there and wait to be ambushed, not to mention that Olivia was fully exposed to Eddie's wrath, he frantically looked from side to side. Which way should he go? Which way would Eddie approach from? An office was to his right, so taking a leap of faith, he began crawling to his left. When no bullets flew his way, he gained courage. He reached the end of the couch and peered around the corner. Where was Eddie? Sneaking up behind him? The hair on the back of his neck stood on end at the thought, and he jerked his head around to check. No one there. Still on his hands and knees, Greg came around the side of the couch. And that's when he saw him. Eddie was on the ground, blood seeping from a hole in his chest. The sound of pounding footsteps, then... Boss! Greg pressed himself against the side of the couch, out of view of Eddie's employees. He heard a soft moan, a feminine moan. It was Olivia. She was alive. Relief poured over him. He had to get to her, had to keep her away from Eddie. Because if Eddie had the chance, he would kill Olivia as punishment for shooting him. Who did this? One of the men asked, his voice a mix of fear and anger. I'll find him, another voice said. That's when Greg knew his time was up. Olivia's throat ached and her eyes felt like someone had pinned them closed. And her head. Why was someone jabbing an ice pick into her brain? Then it all came rushing back, Eddie holding her captive, her saying things to rile him, him choking the very life out of her her believing she was going to die. Why was she still alive? Why had he stopped? Using all the willpower she could muster, she forced her eyes to open. Ponytail was kneeling on the floor, 
talking to the man who had driven them there, saying something about Eddie bleeding out. What had happened? Who had shot Eddie? Had she done it? She remembered thinking she wanted to, but she didn't have a gun. At least, not that she remembered. Did she have amnesia again? Had she shot him and then forgotten? Did it even matter? The important thing was that he'd stopped strangling her, right? I'll find him, Ponytail said, his voice filled with rage as he stood. Find who? Oh, so it wasn't her. Someone else had shot Eddie. Who was it? Though unsure what was going on, Olivia knew one thing. Eddie was down, and the other men were distracted. Olivia grabbed her crutches, which were on the floor beside the couch, then slid her feet to the floor before pushing herself into a sitting position. Dizziness swept over her, and she bowed her head and closed her eyes as she waited for it to pass. After a moment, it did. Ponytail looked right at her. Stay there. Then, with his gun drawn, he walked to her left, as if he was going to look behind the couch where she sat. What if the person who shot Eddie was behind the couch? Would Ponytail shoot him? What if Ponytail killed that person? What would happen to her? Would she be next? Terrified, she watched Ponytail as he reached the end of the couch. Then she heard a sound to her right. Swiveling her head in that direction, to her utter shock, she saw Greg. He was crouched at the end of the couch. He was all right, but what was he doing there? And why was he hiding next to the couch? Their eyes met, and Olivia's lips parted. She wanted to fling herself at him, tell him she loved him. Then it hit her. Greg was the one who had shot Eddie. Greg had stopped him from choking the life out of her. Greg had saved her. Even though he didn't know she'd remembered him, remembered her love for him, he'd risked everything to save her. And now Ponytail was about to find him, and he would shoot him right in front of her. Chapter 33 a bolt of panic shot down Olivia's spine. She couldn't let Ponytail kill Greg. She had to stop him. Her gaze darted to the other man. He was still kneeling over Eddie, pressing his hands to Eddie's chest, trying to stop the bleeding. It was up to her. She had to distract Ponytail, stop him from finding Greg. What's going on? She called out, though her voice was scratchy. What happened? Quiet, Ponytail snapped. Pushing herself to her feet, she balanced on her crutches. What are you doing? Are you looking for someone? He swung his gun around and aimed it at her. Shut up! The sight of the gun's black barrel pointing right at her sent her heart climbing into her throat. Her mouth slammed closed and her eyes went wide. Don't talk to my wife that way, Greg said, now standing at the end of the couch, his gun pointed at Ponytail. Ponytail shifted the aim of his gun to Greg. Olivia looked between Greg and Ponytail, and then her gaze shot to the man hovering over Eddie, the man who now was slowly standing as he drew his weapon. What was Greg doing? They were outgunned. Was he crazy? Get behind me, Olivia. His voice was low and firm. As fast as she could, she crutched her way to Greg, her heart bursting with love for him, although fear that something would happen to him was swiftly taking over all of her thoughts. Drop the gun, Greg, Ponytail said. He glanced toward the other man. You're outnumbered. Not gonna happen, Greg said, his gun still pointed at Ponytail. Terrified that they'd both end up dead, Olivia used the crutches to balance herself while pressing her cheek against Greg's back. The door to the warehouse banged open. Freeze. Olivia couldn't believe it. Men in SWAT gear poured into the warehouse. How had they known to come? How had they known where to find them? Then she knew. Greg had told them. Ponytail's gun clattered to the floor, followed by the gun held by the other man. Greg dropped his as well. The SWAT team swarmed over them, but they seemed to know that Greg and Olivia were the innocent people in the group. Maybe they recognized Greg from the Vipers. Olivia didn't care, as long as they understood that she and Greg were not the bad guys. Ponytail and the other man were cuffed and hauled out of the warehouse. Ma'am? One of the officers said to Olivia. Are you injured? Overcome with relief, she stifled a laugh. I broke my ankle earlier this week. Then, while leaning on her crutches, 
she reached for her throat with one hand while pointing to Eddie with the other. But he choked me until I passed out. Tears rushed into her eyes as the memory clamped down on her. I thought I was going to die. Greg drew her into his arms, and she lay her head against his chest, secure in the knowledge that he would do anything for her. He'd told her he had her back, and he'd shown that he did. Her heart nearly exploded with love for him. The officer looked at Greg. You shot him? Yeah, to stop him from strangling my wife, and from shooting me. The officer nodded. Then he looked at the paramedics who had entered the warehouse after they'd been given the all clear. They were now kneeling beside Eddie. The officer called to one of the men who looked at him and shook his head. Eddie was dead? Shocked, yet also relieved, Olivia didn't know what to say, what to think. He'd killed a man. The thought made him sick. Yes, Eddie was an evil person who the world was better off without. But Greg didn't want to be the one responsible for taking him out. But if he hadn't shot him, Olivia would be dead. His sweet wife, the woman he loved with all of his soul. If taking Eddie's life was what it had taken to save hers, then he wouldn't allow himself to have regrets. He couldn't. He watched as the paramedics checked Olivia's neck and throat. She insisted that she would be fine, that she didn't need to go with them, that she just wanted to go home. Greg intended to get her out of there as soon as he could. Sir, the officer said. We'll need to get statements from both you and your wife. Of course. He thought about Tom, hogtied by the side of the road. There's another man you'll want to arrest. Then, without going into details of what had happened, Greg told him about Tom and where to find him. The officer told two of his men to pick Tom up. Then he turned back to Greg and Olivia. We'd like those statements right away. That's fine, but first I'm going to take my wife home so she can rest. The officer allowed them to leave. Greg had Olivia wait by the door while he jogged to where he'd parked his car and drove it back to pick her up. When they got in the car, Olivia took his hand in hers. Pleased that she was making that move, he hoped that he'd proven to her how much he loved her, and that despite her not remembering him, that she would want to stay with him. On the drive home, Greg noticed Olivia twisting her hands in her lap, and he wondered what was on her mind. Though he wanted to take her hand, he needed both hands to drive since his Ferrari had a manual transmission. Instead, he got them home as fast as he could. Greg. She said when he pulled into the garage, her eyes soft. I have something to tell you. What? She smiled. Let's go inside. At the look on her face, his hopes soared that it was good news. All right. He helped her out of his car, and they made their way into the house. Can we sit out back? Of course. It was evening, and though it was still light out, the temperature had cooled, and it was pleasant. When they were seated side by side on the back patio, the lake spread out below them. Greg took her hands in his. Before she told him what was on her mind, he had to make something clear. I want you to know something. Her blue eyes shone with emotion. What? When I saw Eddie attacking you, the image of Eddie leaping onto Olivia and throttling her was burned into Greg's mind, and when he recalled it, the feeling of horror washed over him again. He shook his head. I just, I couldn't imagine my life without you. He swallowed over the knot in his throat. I know you don't remember me or our marriage, but I want you to know that I love you more than words can say. I always have and I always will. He paused. I hope you'll, well, that you'll give me a chance to prove it to you. Olivia's heart couldn't have been any fuller. Despite believing that she didn't remember him, he was willing to do so much for her, risk his life for her. He really was the man of her dreams, and he was her husband, already bound to her, and she was bound to him. Now it was time to tell him. Greg. Her lips curved into a radiant smile, and Greg's heart hitched with overwhelming love. I remember. Did she mean what he desperately hoped she meant? Could it be possible? Tamping down his deepest wish to avoid having it dashed, he asked, What do you remember? Her eyes filled with tears. Everything. I remember everything. Cautiously optimistic, he waited for her to explain. When you told me I'm your everything, it all came back. All of it. You. Us. Her eyes filled with tears. 
How much I love you. Could it be true? At the look on her face, he knew it was. Soul-searing joy burned into his heart. She remembered him. He was hers, and she was his. They had weathered a devastating storm, but they had survived, and they were stronger for it. Cupping her face with his hands, he gently kissed her lips. I love you so much, Olivia. Overcome with emotion, Olivia gazed into Greg's love-filled eyes. She had no doubt that he loved her completely, and knowing that took away all the pain and all the fear of what they'd been through. I love you, she whispered. Then she leaned against him, and when he put his arms around her, she closed her eyes, savoring the knowledge that they had the rest of their lives to show each other just how deeply their love ran, how much they would do for each other, and how much they meant to each other. He was her world, and she knew she was his, and she knew it would always be that way. Epilogue Three months later I have to admit, Olivia said as she rode next to Greg in his SUV, I'm pleasantly surprised. His lips lifted into a smile. Me too. Olivia stared out the window, a smile lighting her face. They were on their way home after visiting her mother in rehab. After they'd given their statements explaining exactly what had led to Eddie being shot and killed, Greg and Olivia had been cleared of any wrongdoing, and once Olivia's mother had agreed to go to rehab, something she wanted to do anyway, she hadn't been charged with a crime. The fact that there was no evidence against her probably had something to do with that as well. Her mother was doing better than she'd ever done before, and Olivia had complete confidence that she would be able to stay clean this time. In fact, that very day she'd earned her three-month sobriety coin. Thank you for agreeing to pay for her rehab, Olivia said, especially after all she put us through. He chuckled. It was a lot less than the 500 grand Eddie wanted. Anyway, she's family. Of course we're going to help her. Olivia grinned. I still can't believe you headbutted that guy into submission and got away. Giving her a sideways glance, he said, You think it's hot, don't you? She laughed. Okay, yeah, the fact that you were my knight in shining armor does make my heart go pitter-patter. Greg grinned. That's why I did it. Becoming serious, Olivia said, I'm just grateful you found me when you did. The memory of that day still haunted her, but when her thoughts went to what could have happened, she reminded herself of what did happen, and light flooded her soul, chasing away the shadows. Greg reached out and took Olivia's hand glancing at her as he drove. I am too. You'll never know how much. His lips curved into a smile. And there you were, standing on those crutches, ready to take on the world. Olivia rolled her eyes. Those crutches. Her ankle was still healing. It would take months to get fully back to normal, but she'd graduated from the boot to walking in normal shoes, although it would be a while before she'd be able to wear heels again. And when your memory returned? Greg shook his head. It was more than I dared hope for. She completely understood, because when she thought of how she'd lost all those years, all those precious memories, her heart stuttered with a feeling of frustration and loss. You're just saying that because you didn't want to have to woo me all over again. He laughed, a hearty, joy-filled laugh. That's right, beautiful lady, because I wanted to get right to the good stuff. Grinning, Olivia said, good stuff. What do you mean? You know, where you woo me. Cook my meals, give me back rubs, and kisses. Lots and lots of kisses. I don't know about the first two things, but I agree the kissing is nice. At that, they arrived at their house, and once they reached the front door, Greg scooped her into his arms. Squealing with delight, Olivia said, What are you doing? Greg nuzzled her ear. Just carrying my wife across the threshold. You know... Today is the first day of the rest of our lives, and I don't intend to waste a single minute. Throwing her arms around his neck, Olivia breathed in the familiar scent of him, then held on as he carried her inside, eager to spend the rest of her life making him as happy as he made her. This has been Pass Protection, written by Christine Kersey, narration by Eleven Labs, produced by Christine Kersey. Copyright 2018 by Christine Kersey. Thanks for listening.